up, what up, what up? I need, I need that sports, sports encyclopedia. We you ask Steve Kim? Got Trent in the cut. Yeah, yeah. You at, man? In the gym shooting, I'm Durant. You ain't shooting John Moran. Darnell is the Ball State legend. I'm the Warren Central High School legend. Proven with a reliable source, straight from the mouth of the horse. Smitty and JB. JB and Smitty from West Coast to Yost. I love talking, talking ball. It's, it's nice to connect with with guys that, that are like-minded and, and just are real and genuine. Better stay in your lane. How, how is it you, you are fucking insane. You, dude, what? You just will not give this guy his flowers. What is, what, what is wrong with you? Oh, you must have thought I was a bitch. Got to get back to letting the baby cry a little bit to see if they can soothe themselves. That's a bar. Issues get pressed so past it, don't get sacked like bags and baggage. Smitty and Jason Brown, kill the yeah, it's a rap. We what the game's been missing, we switched it and filled the gap. I identified him after his third fight, and I said, that guy should be a star. I'm so proud of, you know, the show, bro. The gap, Smitty and Jason Brown. Coach What up, what up, what up? It is Talk That Talk Tuesday. Talk, and I will talk back right here on the Coach JB Show with Big Smitty. Let's get into it. It is a loaded lineup today. Steve Kim joins us. We're going to talk about all things Caleb Williams, college football, NFL draft, March Madness, women's hoops, Puff Daddy. <laughs> you name it, we got it. Short, fat, skinny, tall. We'll talk about it all. So talk and I'll talk back. We'll take some phone calls. Maybe see Jer Brown and Smitty's twin brother pop in. We don't know what's going on, but it is Talk That Talk Tuesday here on the Coach AB Show with Big Smitty. As we need you to become a member today, subscribe, and also become a member of our Discord Slap Nation. Download the Discord app and download Slap Nation. We got a hell of a show today. Steve Kim joins us to talk shop, plus break down the Sweet 16, the March Madness, USC, UCLA, my women's picks of the day yesterday, both winner, 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 chicken dinners. Plus, we'll break down much more on the realest show on planet Earth. Listen, uh, to start the show off, I always say addition by subtraction is a real thing. Well, it is. But subtraction by addition is a real thing, too. We keep talking about addition by subtraction on this show i gotta talk about subtraction by addition and we keep taking and taking away from what once was the pinnacle of all sports the nfl football specifically the nfl football product which was head and shoulders above any other league on planet earth is now we have now taken away so many meaningful assets such as kickoff, wedge breakers, hitting of the quarterback, high low in the O-line, D-line game, cut blocking on the edge by a running back or wide receiver, crackbacks by anyone on change of possessions. We took away hitting wide receivers across the middle. The Pro Bowl is in fucking flags, people. And now we have added the so-called hip drop tackle to that subtraction by addition. And it has created a buzz around the league from former and current players alike. We are losing the sports world, ladies and gentlemen, and it's making it and it's not making it safer. It's not making it better. It's making it worse and more unsafe. Look at the numbers. Injuries are up. Playing time is down. Yet we have more rules than ever. And yet we find more players than ever before. We fine them every single day. Why? How do you find more players than ever before, yet have more rules in a apparent safer space? Make it make sense, man. I, I don't get it. But now to sports. NFL owners approved the hit ban tackle. We're going to dive into it. The Jets owner, Woody, says he will keep the Mormon MILF hunter, Zach Wilson, if no trades come about. 
Shotani interview. We're going to dive into that. Doesn't look good for him. If you're just asking me from outside looking in, Pete Rose looks great. Caleb Williams has his girl's phone at his at the basketball game. Nothing to talk about there. John Tay Porter, the brother of um, the Porter for the Nuggets, gets caught in a betting scandal. We're going to dive into that. More gambling issues in pro sports. Puff Daddy's on the run. True or false? But it's true. What was true is three houses were raided. I'm going to dive into that. Talk to somebody that actually knows more than me about Puff and this whole situation. Ron DeSantis banned social media for everyone under 14 in the state of Florida. I actually love it. We're going to dive into that as well. I know Smitty will hate it. Sean Strickland says he can take a Navy SEAL any day-to-day on a day-to-day regiment, and the Navy SEAL responds. Uh, You're going to get my take on that one. Giants ownership approves them for drafting a quarterback. What does that mean for Daniel Dimes? 49ers say Ayuk's not available, even though his Ayuk's post on IG story saying that exactly what Antonio Pierce and the Raiders says. We're going to dive into that. Keep an eye on that story. But before we begin, my wonderful co-host, Ball State legend, Naptown's finest, 317, Far East Side, great. AR5 defending, Lamar Jackson loving, LeBron hairline having, Fox Sports' very own, a quiet, Smitty lost his voice, by the way, he can't talk loud anymore, a very quiet, big Smitty, welcome him in. What's going on, y'all, what's going on, y'all, what's going on, can y'all hear me, can y'all hear me? So listen, I lost my voice a little bit, like JB alluded to. Um, also, I had a doctor's appointment. They told me, said, Big Smitty, you got to quiet down a little bit. They said, you get too hyped every single morning. And they, they, did, they did an EKG on my heart. And they saw that, like, from six to nine, the increase in, like, uh, obviously heart rate. But it was it was at a too much of a heightened level. To where they said, Darnell, Big Smitty, you got to quiet down a little bit. So it's going to be my voice, man. It's, listen, the same passion throughout the show, but the voice going to be a little lower, man, at least for the next few days until I get everything back in alignment, man. What's going on, JB? I can't do it. We got to be honest. This is the realest show on planet Earth. We can't do the lie. We can't lie to nobody on this show. We're too honest. <laughs> Smitty, do you want to tell the fans or do, should I tell the fans why you're going to be quiet today? I'm going to tell them, man. So, listen, I live in a fucking apartment because y'all didn't give us the money for the studio. And, um, yeah. <laughs> so, people upstairs and downstairs was going to the landlord saying I was too loud in the morning, man. The landlord hit me up yesterday during the show. I go back around 8 o'clock. You'll see I got real quiet because I was pissed. I was on my phone texting the landlord back and forth. The landlord actually pretty cool. He don't give a fuck. But when he's constantly getting text messages from his other people in the apartment, obviously he's the leader. He has to kind of figure out something. So he was like, bro, he was like, technically speaking, in the lease, you know, you're not supposed to be disturbing, you know, your, your your neighbors, you know, at this time. He's like, after 9 a.m., I don't care what the hell you guys do, but before 9 a.m., technically speaking, it does say that in the lease. So I got to figure out what I'm going to do, y'all. I don't know. Me and JB, we, we might be forced to go to a studio, like, literally now. And it's crazy. God work in mysterious ways, JB. Sometimes things like this happen, and at, at, at the moment, it seems like it's a it's a bad thing. It's a punishment. But in hindsight, after the blessing happens, you be like, you know what? That had to happen for me and JB to get the courage to take that next step. So we'll, we'll see what happens, y'all. But I'm going to be a little quieter because I don't want to have to – you know, I just got my license. And I don't want to have to use nothing. And I don't want to get out. You know? and, and and do some stuff. Some shit we used to have to do back in the day, where, where you act like you don't know who I am. You come out like, "What are you doing?" And I'm I'm beating the shit out your neighbors. And then they, you come out like, "What are you guys doing?" And try to save the day, but they don't know that. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk. Let's talk that's offline. We, that's how we used to do it in the hood back in the day. Real in the real hood, not like in the out there in Indiana and shit. Here you go. Here you go. But nah, let me know, man. Whatever. 
Oh, and then I'm gonna cuss him out. I'm gonna get him so hot he can't really do much. It's like he's not, he can't really do much. I'm gonna fuck with him all day long. Don't worry, y'all. I'll bring the energy. I'm a fuck. He can't debate me no more. He like oh, we, not, it's gonna be the coach. JP we still gonna debate again. And then with Smitty over there, we're gonna say with Smitty over there. We're gonna change the name of the of the show um, for a while until we get a studio, which is all your guys' fault, by the way. So. We're going to blame you guys. Uh, so it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. We'll see what's happening. I'm going to still debate you. I'm going to do it from a real smooth standpoint, from a real player standpoint. The ladies like this voice, actually. I've been told that this voice is a good voice for the ladies. So I'm going to be real smooth with it, but I'm still going to be cooking the whole show. <laughs> Let's get to the quote of the day. We got lots to talk about. Steve Kim joins us. We might take some calls. We got Jabrown in the building. Jabrown here? Jabron over there. Uh, I heard your brother was supposed to show up too one day, but I don't know. What Dan Rail, he's supposed to be coming later today, but I'm not sure. You know, black people always, black people shit, always late. So Dan Rail might pull up today. He might be here. Let's dive into the quarter today, brought to you by betonline.ag. What up, what up, what up, man? The real Coach JB here for the Coach JB show with Big Smitty. We got a proud new sponsor, of course. For the second part of the year, and that's Bet Online. Continue to be your number one source for all basketball wagering needs, including pro and college hoops throughout the year. March Madness is here. Join us every Monday and Friday with Jeff Nadu as we will pick them and up to minute odds, stats, and trends. You can follow your favorite team's path to the playoffs with in game live betting contests and all the best player props. Experience the world's best wagering platform anytime from your desktop to your mobile device. Head on over to Bet Online today. Become part of the team and remember to use promo code BELIEVE, B L E A V, for 50% off plus welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. Peace. Let's dive into quarter today. Uh, Get you guys started. The only limit to our realization of tomorrow will be our doubts of today. <sighs> the only limit to our realization of tomorrow will be our doubts of today. So I uh, don't doubt today about tomorrow. So yesterday, Smitty was doubting me. He got kicked out, evicted out of the apartment, and we know we got this shit fixed up. Now today, he's like more optimistic, so we got a better day. Uh, contrary to belief. Oh, this is a cold one, by the way. Ooh, I brought this is my own. In the middle of every difficulty lies opportunity, contrary to belief. Mm. Man, the segues are unbelievable. Smitty got kicked out, he got evicted, and then look what happened. In the middle of every difficulty lies opportunity, contrary just, to I just, belief. I just said that too, Jay. What did I just say? Listen, I know y'all don't believe us, but we, we really don't plan this show like. JB will put the topics together the night before. I might send a few things to like our group chat. There's some a few uh, suggestions. Half the time he already was thinking that anyway, so it was not even really helping that much. And then we come here in the morning, and I don't. I try not to look at the quote of the day and stuff like that because I, I want to be surprised, just like you guys are. So the fact that he just said what he said, and I started to show off talking about me getting evicted and God sometimes having to do something to make you take that next step. That's crazy how he just said that, y'all. So. My fault, JB. Continue. That, that, that was a bar, though. Yeah. Uh, we got a. Uh, I got a new segment. Well, not new, but I wanted to bring it up today. Make it make sense. Ooh, it's back. It's projected, Smitty, that over fifty percent of the first round NFL draft picks are bust. But you can tell me when your eight year old is elite. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. I, I, I shit make it make sense. I'm so fucking tired of these elitists talking about. Hey, I know who's a bust and who's not. They'll tell you about everybody. They never played. They never coached. But they will break down every NFL draft pick, and then they'll sit there and say, "Well, but I know that eight year old's a motherfucker." Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Listen, I don't know about that first rounder, but that eight year old." Tired of these fucking. That's why I'm so against the women coaching in the NFL. That's just ah, damn, damn. damn. I'm, I'm just saying that's so. just my only real. That's like goes back full circle. So everything comes back to the women coaching. 
it don't matter what's going on, bro. Like we could be talking about food, food or something. Like drink. <laughs> everything bad. Everything comes back to the women coaching in the NFL. Um, it's been like I was driving to work, man, with so much damn traffic. That's why I don't like women coaching in the NFL. I had a bite of a burger last night and shit was cold. That's all I like women coaching in the NFL. I was taking a piss last night and, and, and my shit was it was burning a little bit. That's all I like women coaching in the NFL. I was brushing my teeth yesterday and my breath was still oh, sticking oh, after it. That's all I like women coaching in the NFL. Your like, shit burning? Keep... No, my shit ain't burning. But your, your shit ever burned before? Why you peeing? Yeah. Thank you. You know what I mean? All right. I got burnt when I was 17, man. You want to know the true story of it? Yeah, come on. Go ahead and tell me. I didn't even hit. No. No, you can't get burned doing that. Well, I didn't even hit. The broad hood rat, too. God damn it. I knew better. It was a hood rag at Compton. So what I, what happened was, like, I hit with the condom. I was on on time now. So, so uh, my, my pro, no, my point is I didn't, I wasn't hitting when I got it. So what happened was I hit already. Afterwards, you know, she was older broad. She was older broad. So she hadn't come yet. She didn't come yet. So she was like, you gonna make me come. So she was rubbing my shit on her shit. Oh. Bear. Oh. On the outside. <laughs> and two weeks later, dog, trip this. Two weeks later at my grandpa's funeral, I had to go take a piss. Burning like pissing out razor blades. That was the first time and the only time, Smitty. First time and the only time. That mother had that. Well, there's two things. There's you got there's chlamydia and then there's gonorrhea. So you got to know your STD. You got to know which one burns, which one like. There's ones that just cause like drip. There's ones that cause burning. There's ones that cause you know this nasty shit. I vouch to never ever have some shit like that again. And she was 30. I was 17. That dirty bitch. All right. <laughs> Thanks uh, for sharing your TED Talk, JB. We have a segment called JB Talk. Like JB, like TED Talk, JB's. What's it going for JB? Like JB, what's something to start with a J? JB's jubilation. JB's. JB's joys. I don't know. JB's. We'll figure uh, it out. We'll figure it out. Bailey, you figure it out. You're the producer. Poll question. Get that look, y'all. Should women <laughs> that's all like women coaching in the NFL? <laughs> should, <laughs> no, real shit. I got a real question, dog. You guys got it. You got it. It's not all about women. Dog. You guys got to hang in there. I can't even cough no more. <laughs> Cause you get it. <laughs> I'm gonna get it thick off a cough. I'm gonna tell him I got COVID. <laughs> I'm not gonna get evicted for coughing. <laughs> Black people shit. Hood 101. Don't live in the hood in apartments. You gotta get out the hood in the apartment. Poll question: Should oh women's March Madness games be played on a neutral court, Smitty? Real question right there. See, everybody thinks I'm negative. Should women's March Madness games be played on neutral courts? Our homegirl, Coach Yo, kind of hot. Uh, and now, listen, it's going to look like she lost and she's mad that she lost, but she has receipts last year when she won two games on the road in, at, in the Pac-12's uh, home courts. She beat these teams out here on the West Coast. She was like, look, I don't think it's fair. I think we should be playing neutral sites like the men because of it's such a smaller, more finite audience for women that when you go to a place like South Bend or when you go to a place like Gonzaga or Utah, you have a lot of issues outlying just the game. And it's basically a home game. USC, UCLA just advanced to the Sweet 16. They both played at their home court right here in L.A. Yeah. The other part about that is you're pulling L.A. fan base, for instance, like L.A. USC UCLA played basically at the same time last night, and one game started a half later. So SC started their game when UCLA was at halftime. By the way, Coach JB slap picks of the day, dog. I took six picks. That's a lot, Smitty. I fucking hit on all fucking five out of six. Ah. Guess who fucked me? Who fucked you? 
Marcellus Wiley. <gasps> the Clippers got you. The fucking Clippers, man. Mm, 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 the Clippers on a back-to-back. The Pacers are on a back-to-back. Just lost to the Lakers. And the Clippers got no killer instinct to just put their foot on a Pacers team that on a back-to-back. Fuck, man. Clippers are garbage, dog. I don't know who fucking po- tells me that the Clippers are good. Kawhi didn't really do shit. Paul George didn't really do shit. Harden didn't do shit. I told everybody that was a horrible fucking threesome. Paul. Oh. The Clippers are shit. Cost me and everybody that took those bets. By the way, I got a lot of people that hit me up saying, damn, coach, that's a good-ass bet. The Hawks was down 30. I look like an idiot. They came back and won the game. And people were like, damn. Then Dallas was down the whole game and ended up winning by 10, covering that. Then the UCLA and SC both win. And Clippers fucked me. The last game of the night, too. That's how it comes down to, man. I'm sorry to hear that, man. You know, when it comes to money, I want you to win. We don't hate when it comes to that. But I will say this, y'all. Y'all got to trust Big Smitty. I know JB, the superstar of the show, but when it comes to certain things, man, I am experienced, and I don't think we got my my bets on here, but I can verbally tell you I have my own parlay on prize picks, man. Caitlin Clark over 31 and a half points. Juju Watkins over 26 and a half points. And Kate Martin of Iowa under 12 and a half points. Easy parlay. Put up $20, make it win 100, and your boy cashed in. <laughs> Congrats, Easy man. money. Did he hit? <laughs> we have some betting news coming soon, so just you guys stay tuned because we're doing some betting shit, and that's why we're kind of picking up the pace on this betting thing. Two days ago, I went four and two in my March Madness pick, so I'm uh, I'm actually you're all, Jimmy's always this close to hitting some big. By stuff. the way, I'm nine and three though in my last two bets, so not a bad real. if you look at the rest of the world. Nine and three is pretty good. By the way, I love what D. Jones says. JB, they didn't do shit. They both had 26. LOL, like he acts like he really thinks 26 in that game did a lot. <clears throat> right. People that don't play sports or coach don't understand. They go to the fucking newspaper the next day and they look at the box score and say, oh, Paul George and Kawhi had 26. How about look at the game and see how the game flowed and see when they scored their 26. Maybe they scored the points at the end when they were already getting fucking blown out. You, you motherfuckers have no clue what you're talking about. D. Jones, you disappoint me. Like, you come off as just a fanboy. Like the mm. rest of the Twitter guru fucks. You don't know sports better than that? Come on, D. Jones. No wonder you're buried out in fucking Jacksonville in the middle of no fucking place. All right, let's dive into... Uh, <laughs> By the way, real quick, on my bets, man, I, I told Bailey and JB this last night... I'm not a conspiracy theorist, and I'm not suggesting that these women or these girls did anything. But it was kind of funny that literally I needed – so Caitlin, she scored two free throws at the very end of the game, like literally the last freaking play of the game. She gets fouled for no reason. They're up. The game's over. It's out of reach. She still gets fouled, and she has to make these two free throws in order for my parlay to stay alive. She does that. Juju, USC is kicking, uh, kicking ass. The game is over, like a minute and a half left. They had – Bench, I think all the starters except Juju. Juju gets the ball, goes down court like a minute, some change left, and makes a a, a beautiful like I think it was like a floater off the glass to to get over the 26 and a half point mark to get 28. And then they benched her. So I don't know what went on, but it seemed like somebody above them knew what the, their spreads were and they kept them in the game or something until they got past that point. I know it's a big conspiracy. I'm not complaining because they helped me win some cheese. But it was crazy that literally I was talking to JB. I'm like, JB, I need one more shot. I need two, just one more shot. JB was like, oh, fuck, they fouled Caitlin. I was like, thank I you. I showed you my prize picks picks from yesterday. Yeah. And this happened a few times in a row. I have two people that I picked. One of them was 27 and a half points. And he got 27. And the other one was... Oh, Jalen Brown, more than 24 and a half. The motherfucker scored 24. <laughs> That's wild, bro. Jalen Green was 27 and a half. He scored 27. And I hit it on everything else. See, that's the thing. 
exactly like Brian Case. How does Vegas know this shit, and how did they pick those points to be in to begin with? Twenty seven and a half over under. I go over, and then if I get twenty seven, this happens all the time. By the way, right? How do they know? Man, they know. <laughs> hey, I, I used to have Brandon Lang on here all the time. Brandon Lang's a good friend of mine, professional better, one of the best in the world at the time. At, at a time, they made a movie about him, of course. And he tells me all kind of crazy shit. So mm. I'll, I'll get Brandon back on. Brandon, you'll love Brandon. He's crazy. He's a motherfucking shithouse rat, but he's a good friend. Um, pretty crazy. All right, Smitty, let's dive into this. Uh, let's dive into it. We got a lot going on. Uh, NFL bans the hip drop tackle. Competition committee was unanimous on the decision. I talked the show, started the show off with uh, addition by subtraction is a real thing. Well, so is subtraction by addition. Uh, we keep adding and adding and adding and taking away and taking away and taking away. Subtraction by addition is a real thing. And a lot of people don't understand what that means. We're taking away and taking away rules and rules and rules, subtracting, and we're adding to the problem, Smitty. We're adding. That would be a hip trap taco right there. Would it not be? Yep. Hip trap. All these. So, no, this is the point I want to make. This is what you're going to get. Exactly. This is the league that's about to be watched right here. This league is the league that you're going to see and just cringe. Look at that shit, man. What are we doing? This is the league we're going to be playing in, everybody, because we're scared to tackle the hip which was the rule one-on-one when we learned to tackle in Pop Warner. Track the hip of the ball carrier. Take out the, take the air out of the hip of the ball carrier. This is this, what JB. you're going to see from now on going forward, man. People can't tackle the hip. They're going to be scared to fucking get fined, kicked out. This is a joke. Like, it is really a joke. And if you don't think gambling and betting is a pure correlation to this rule, you're out of your mind. If anyone don't pick and get their draft, their their fantasy drafts going right now, and all of them, if you don't all fight to pick Derrick Henry first, you're out of your mind. Who's tackling mm. Derrick Henry first? Who's tackling Derrick Henry? Who's tackling George Kittle? Who's tackling any of these guys? You better start thinking if you want to make some money because it's there right now for the taking. If you don't think gambling is directly correlated with this rule, you're out of your mind, and that's why I I think the fix is in. This is why the league is becoming shitty. I agree with Jeff Nadu. Gambling and betting has caused a lot, a lot of Bad, bad football in the last few years, or sports in general, and I just, I, it, it doesn't excite me. We used to have two hundred yard running, rushing games when the rules were legit. That's real football. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't have any rushing yard. That's the fucking true real football. Now you're excited to see two hundred yard games by a, in a fake game being played by a league that can't tackle. That excites you, Lord Isaac's Lords, whatever the fuck your name is. <laughs> you fucking idiot. That excites you a fake game. You want to see a fake shitty Pop Warner football game in the NFL? That excites you. That's what's wrong with the motherfuckers, man. That's what's wrong with you, motherfucker. You think that it's gonna be good football? You think this shit is fucking parody? It's equal. Uh, it's absolute shit. Mm. You're about to see it even get worse. But yeah, we got motherfuckers excited to see 200 yard rushing games because we're playing flag football. Fuck out of here. I'm with you, man. 100. percent I told y'all guys from the jump before the rule was even uh, truly accepted and pushed forward that it was a horrible rule. It just is not realistic, you know, for a defensive player. It, it football is is bang bang. It's it's a it's a five not even five second three three to five second play half the time. Like things are happening so quick. You're as a defensive player, your your goal is just to get this guy down. It's not gonna be perfect form tackle. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna actually increase injuries even more because now guys are hesitant. And the one thing they always teach you on the football field: do everything hundred miles per hour. Do not hesitate. 
because that's actually how you do get hurt when everyone else is going hard and you're out there hesitating and guessing. So it's like you can't hit guys too low or you're dirty. You can't hit them high or you'll get a fine and you'll get ejected and kicked out and get suspended. And then now you can't hit them at the hip. I don't know where to hit them at. You want to hit them? It's like one. you got one spot to tackle the guy. You got one location to tackle him now. It just doesn't make sense, uh, man. You know what I can't wait for, which is unfortunate because I don't ever wish. I know what you're going to say. Injuries on people. There's going to be hits. a whole new injury. Now you're going to have an injury by, of the of the lower extremities even lower. You're not going to have ankle twist and turn. You're going to have roll ankles. Achilles are going to be blown out at an all-time high. They hit low. You're going to have more back problems and upper uh, cartilage issues, shoulders, fingers because we're going to grab more jerseys than you've ever seen in your entire fucking life we're going to see we're going to see grabbing of jerseys from the back jet uh injuries from all the hands fingers and ligaments are going to be fucked it's going to turn this into the worst see here's the issue i have we're supposed to be the the trendsetter Mm. we're the best tackler the best route runner the best hand-eye coordination the best hands the best ball spinner now what you're going to see is this shitty ass product, and now you're going to go down and look, and college is going to tackle that way, and high school is going to tackle with the. It's turning it into flag. What do they do? What does this do? It's flag. <laughs> you're going to turn this thing into flag at all levels, and they're doing it in front of our very eyes without us really understanding that this is what they're doing. It's crazy, JB. It seems like. Every time a player gets hurt from something, the league looks into how they got hurt and try to make a decision on if they should ban it. So like you said, now what's going to happen is there's going to be an increase in lower extremity injuries. I agree with you on that because everyone's going to be shooting low, especially the corners and the safeties, and they're all going to be just coming down low. Boom, boom, boom. Well, I wonder league- where you're supposed to hit at. So I'm saying the league will be like, ah, right, you can't you can't dive straight at, at knees now. That's going to be that, that's gonna be the next rule. So it's going to be like, damn, y'all. What do y'all want us to do? Can we can we not play football? Like, what do you want us to do? I'm trying to figure out where they're where where are they right now? What's defense figuring out? Where are they Maybe gonna... as a coach, if you was coaching right now, if you was still at Indy right now, and this rule came across all football, what are you telling your defensive players to do? I don't know. I'd probably tell them I'm gonna resign. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to coach it. Like it's just it's stupid. It's really stupid. Like you're still in money if you're a coach because you I guys be honest. Where do you where are you gonna teach your guys to tackle at? So I can't hit you in the knees. I can't hit you high. I can't hit the quarterback low. Every single person has a different rule, by the way, too. Right. This is the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my life, dog. Like it is the dumbest shit I've ever seen. The commissioners, the NFL committees, the everybody should be a fucking shame to themselves. And, and this is why I bring it back to full circle about. The argument we had yesterday with women refing. This is just what I think it is. This I, I truly believe that they're opening up this this league for that. For the woman to get in it. I'm just telling y'all, man. What watch? Just watch. Watch when there's a woman head coach and a woman player in the NFL. And y'all come back to me in five years and be like, damn, JB said that shit. This is there's always an opening and they always Give it to you slowly. But at the end of the day, they're trying to give it to you raw and rugged. And it's just a slow approach. This is it. This is the slow approach to this game. They're doing it this way for a reason, dog. So it doesn't, you don't just say, oh, no, 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 no. But little by little by little, you can't trip. It's the same by, it's the same in the in the economy with gas prices. When they raise them up to six something and then everyone's like, man, eh, fuck. And then in, in like six months, they raise them down. And it's like five dollars. Everyone thinks they won. <laughs> no, nah, dog, it was just three dollars. They went up to six. You guys forgot that it went down only a dollar, and all you motherfuckers are thinking that oh, gas came down. Like you know, every single person you know, they do that. Like oh, do gas it. is down, dog. Yeah, no, it ain't down. It's still up two dollars. Consumer behavior is crazy. I mean, I, I'm gonna be real. I own a clothing brand, and I have full power over how if I want to charge for shipping if i want to like whatever i want to do so this the same concept sometimes we'll play around with the prices sometimes we we, we might we drop a new product jb and and, and tax and, and throw a crazy amount out and then and then we'll do a fucking uh 35 sale they're like oh it's on sale 
not really. It's not really on sale. We still making crazy profit on this because of what we spent on it. But the business, the, the economy, they've been doing this shit at a high level. So it, uh, I don't get breaking it. Breaking news. Uh, they also added not only the hit man tackle, they've also now added the kickoff rule. Was approved. Owners in favor of 29 to 3. Listen. This is, hold on. Anytime you got that many damn lines about one rule, you're doing too much. And then for them to discredit the XFL and say this isn't the XFL rule, blow my mind. It blew my mind. When they say this isn't the XFL rule, what is it? You didn't start at NFL. The XFL made it up. <laughs> I, I, ah, man. I don't know. I just, it, they're they're inserting it inch by inch, dog. <laughs> I'm telling you, pause right in your ass. <laughs> oh, uh, Big pause. All right, let's dive into Shador Sanders. Uh, says he his life has been against the odds. I came from a small private school. Uh, <sighs> oh my god. Okay, let's dive into this. I know a little bit about this for no, number one. Okay, he's talking about the six A schools in Texas. First of all, his face makes me want to slap the shit out of him. I, I just be honest. I do not do well with fake ass good boys. I just don't. Um, and I'm telling you right now from your boy, Smitty, your boy that knows this business as far as judging character and doing these things with players and the many thousands of them. He is a fake ass good boy, probably a shit bird. I'm just telling you straight out. And this is not only my inner belief, but it's from people that I know that were very close to the situation that's no longer there. So here's my thing, my take. I go half with my gut and I go half with facts and knowledge that I get from resources or sources. First of all, he was at some 6A schools and left. Number one, let's be honest, because he couldn't play there. Then he goes to a private school because his daddy wanted him in a safe space where he could thrive in his controlled environment. Let's just be clear and make sure that it's we're keeping it funky. That is what happened. But for you to come out and say that you had it fucking rough, and what came from the mud when your daddy's been a multimillionaire for his entire life since you were born is a slap in the face to every hood kid that I've ever coached and every kid right now that's actually coming from the mud, so to speak, quote unquote. This cat is just giving me more and more reasons to absolutely despise the motherfuckers. And this is why I say just be humble and shut the fuck up and let your field show everyone. Let your performance prove us wrong, dog. Stop it. You're just putting a bigger target on your daddy of all people, not just you. So I'm over with the shit. Anytime Matt brings it up from here on out on the show, we're going to have a fight. I'm just telling you straight out. I don't fuck with him no more. I don't like it. Now you're just now you're kind of discrediting all the cats that I've ever coached in my entire life and every single kid that came from the neighborhood who actually came from the mud, including yourself, Smitty. Um, it's a fucking joke to say that you came from the mud and had to go to another school. No, you didn't. You fucking just say you weren't good enough at the time, and that's okay. I would have took that. I wasn't either. I was a late bloomer. You may or you were a late bloomer, I think you said. Hella late. So why you don't just say that? I have respect for that. Don't say you came from the mud and you had to go through all these trials and tribulations. Get the fuck out of here. Well, in that. all fairness, I think he said been against the odds is what it was. No, his- no, he's not, though. It, it, he, I read everything and heard everything. There's not one thing he said that's, that's even a misconceiving take on mm. my end. Every single thing he said. You didn't go against no odds. Actually, the odds are 1,000% in your favor to make it in today's society, motherfucker. You have all things in your favor. You have a daddy with a huge following, which allows your social media following to make you millions of dollars. It allows you to have these cars. 
And I don't check no man's pockets. I don't give a fuck what you do. Power to you. But don't talk about you're against the odds. Right. Motherfucker, your odds are your daddy, and it's in your favor. The odds were in your favor since you were conceived. Talk about you're against the odds? Motherfucker, go to Compton, homie, and tell me that those cats ain't against the odds. And tell me that east side of Minneapolis and the east side of Minneapolis and the fucking Detroit and the 313 and the fucking rural shit shows of Atlanta, Georgia, shitholes of Florida, shitholes of South Carolina. Let's go to Silver Bluff, South Carolina, motherfucker. How about you go to fucking rural ass North Carolina, about 10 miles from the ocean. Go recruit some of those cats that are in the fucking, it's a shithole in the hood near the ocean in North Carolina. Unbelievable players, too. Those are against the odds because you know why? Nobody knows who they are. Nobody even knows there's high schools out there. Right. Man, please, get the fuck out of here. I ain't got too much to add. I mean, he hit the, he hit the nail right on the head. You got, you know, uh, I don't know. You know what I mean? I'm always trying to find the, give people the benefit of the doubt. That's my natural lean on, but I just think he just shot himself in the foot on this one. Like, K Pud, call in, K Pud. Call in. Call in, K Pud, right now. Send call the number. In, since you know so motherfucking much, call Send in. Send the number. Call I in. Phone. I don't have the phone on. Oh, call, never in mind. call in here face to face. Send him the link. Send him, drop the link so he, he can click in and do a video. I like, always oh, want to talk, but but let's call call in, motherfucker. The, the link's right there. What do you say? I didn't even see what he said. Hey, call in. He said, yes, exact quote, please. JB straight client and always changing things to push the narrative. I want to know what I changed. <laughs> call in. I bet dollars to dimes you don't call in, though. I bet you dollars to dimes you won't call in. So real quick, while, we, while we're waiting to see if she will call in, when I first saw the she. quote, I think it was she. When I first saw the quote, I took it as if, like, all right, he used horrible phrasing, horrible wording, but he's speaking from when he says odds, he's been against the odds. He's speaking from a underdog football story he's from a standpoint of like on the football field. I was like, he said, I was a late bloomer. I had, I got all these big time, you know, four star guys already playing. And I had to, you know, quote unquote, grind my way to, 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 to become who I was from a player, from a player specific standpoint, not from a, like it's obvious he got money. His daddy's Deion Sanders. So when he when he said it gets the gets all odds, I didn't take it as if he was speaking in in the standpoint of his livelihood. I kept it strictly foot football field based. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I think he used horrible phrasing. But then even listen with JB, JB's giving me more, more information on the situation. He said, nah, he was at a 6 a school, couldn't play, and then got transferred out to the private school. But I want to know, this is going back to my original tank that mm -hmm. we've argued on this show with Matt, yourself. Yep. In defense, you've been defending Dion and shit. I've even defended Dion. Steve Kim's defended Dion in cases. Yeah. Here's the take, though. This is, goes back to my first take of this whole thing. Yes, sir. Parenting and coaching your son should even be double the standard as just coaching a regular kid. Get the fuck out of my coach's meeting. Get the fuck out of me talking to the other head coach after a game. Get the fuck away from me. You're not a coach. You're not an equal. You're my son, A, and you're my quarterback player, B. But this cat, Dion, has allowed his son to be an equal, which has allowed his son to make these outlandish fucking stupid comments on a day-to-day -day basis without any humility. The reason why you're going to have a Caleb Williams approach. Mm. To having what we're doing right now about Caleb Williams, what we're saying about Caleb Williams right now, what the narrative out there, right? Yep. And by the way, it could be totally wrong on Caleb Williams. None of us here knows him. We could be totally wrong. We're alleging that we see things that he does on social media, et cetera. This is the same thing, though, that you're getting from him. Okay, bud, I don't know why you're still talking. We offered you to, to call in. Why are you still talking? Now get the fuck out. You're a fucking idiot. So I give you the opportunity. You're a cowardly cunt. You don't want to call in. Oh, JV, JV, JV. Uh, and if you're a female, then you're still a cowardly cunt. So let's dive into this whole Shador Sanders thing. I, that's my take on him. I don't agree with anything he said. I don't like it. I don't fucking understand it. And I don't get that the father, the dad, the fucking, the powers that be, the circle that he has still allows this type of rhetoric to be spewed 
out in mainstream media when you know all eyes are on you. See, people don't know I'm a chameleon. I can go from calling you a cunt to straight up bar dropper. That's just who I am. So uh, anyway, because that's the realest motherfucker on planet Earth. Um, All right, let's dive into it. Um, (coughs) I don't know if she's a female or not, but don't call in with a fake fucking name and a person then. Um, Hope it's a man because I love calling men that word. No, I was a female, I think. Okay, so the no, you don't, you don't know. Um, <laughs> let me try to make me feel bad. Um, but I don't. I don't feel bad at all. Um, I don't know. I I don't know if you got anything else to add, Smitty. I'm done with Sadur Sam. To be honest, nah, with you. You, you. I don't know. You. I don't know how I'm gonna approach this with Matt anymore because I'm just done with it, dog. Like there's all there's certain things that you say that disrespect the game, hmm. and the game is at the end of the day. The game is the opportunity. You got the opportunity from the game. Yeah. Everybody has their own skill set. Everybody has their own ins and outs. The game itself, though, is the opportunity that we get. And when you disrespect the game, I have a major problem with it. And when you disrespect the forefathers that have come up, like your own daddy who actually did come from the mud, who made it easy for you, you disrespectful fuck. That's what I. That's the problem I have. But anyway, this is no direct uh, correlation of Smitty's thoughts, by the way. So Smitty could still try to get your door on his show or something. This has nothing against, against him. <laughs> Me, the Coach AB show side, Smitty side, I know is, speaks differently of him. And Smitty doesn't talk like that. So I just want to be clear. You ain't got to say that, JV. It's all good. Ad sponsors and everybody else. Um, all right. So, <laughs> Smitty, let's dive into Pete Rose. Um, Responding mm. to Otani. Uh, I want to dive into Pete Rose and Otani. It's Matt Thrash here enjoying some March Madness with my great friend Pete Rose. And uh, we just had a – we were talking about the current goings-on in baseball right now, and Pete wanted to mention something. Well, back in the 70s and 80s, I wish I'd have had an interpreter. I'd be Scott free. There you have it from the hit king. He said, hold on, I love the country folk. He said, we were over here talk, watching MLB baseball, and we were trying to talk about what, what's what been going zone. Motherfucker said going zone with an S. What's been going zone? But on a serious note, hey, I feel him. I wish I had an interpreter. This motherfucker, Otani came out. He put everything on the interpreter. That motherfucker went out there. He said it, He said his shit. We didn't, we didn't know what he said. And the interpreter jumped in. I did not gamble on anything. I never made any payments at all. My interpreter stabbed me in my back, took all my money and stole it from me. I think they got like a little plan where they said, if you ever get caught, buddy, you taking the fall and I'm going to take care of your family. And that's what that, that's the hood shit one on one. You got the money maker who funds everything. They know what's going on. They're allowing the illegal shit to happen. But if something hits the fan at the end of the day, Otani is the king. He's the billionaire. You can't let him fall. If he loses, everybody underneath him loses. So you got to take the fall. And I ain't gonna lie, I kind of hope he's a billionaire, but I, I think he misled, misspoke. But I, he's, I know he, what you mean. He about to be a billionaire. I'm speaking in the, in the, the motherfucker. What contract did he sign? Was it seven hundred million? Yeah, but that's not. I know he ain't getting all up front, but I'm just saying, yeah. like, motherfucker gonna be a billionaire, whatever he is. He a, he a lot of money. Let's say that. And let me let me let me dive into this a little deeper. Dive into this, it deeper. The issue about this is that people don't want to break down, which I wish I had a Jeff or somebody on here. This wasn't a four million dollar bet, homie. Because when you bet, let's just keep it real. I just went. I, what was the percentage I won last night? What would be the percentage, Bailey? Five out of six would be what? What is that? Sixty? What is that? Seventy seven percent? What is that percentage? Five out of six. Let's go back to. I was four and two the day before. What's four and two? Uh, Sixty. On a Good day. Let's just be honest. Let's say if you're a better and you bet all the time. 83. And then uh let's just say you bet all the time, Smitty. 83%. Okay. 83% better is fucking really good. 40% better is like I, I think the norm, I, I think if they really did it, the norm would be like 30% win. You win 30% of the time if you bet. But let's say we win 40% of the time. Otani just didn't place a one-time $4 million bet, contrary to everyone's belief out here, because that's not how betting works. 
this cat's been betting and betting millions of dollars that no one's talked about. He's had to have bet tens of millions of dollars to see the four and a half million dollars finally being gone is what finally raised alarms. Meaning he went through the wins and the losses, Smitty, and then the loss was four and a half million. And he was like, oh, oh, oh hold up. Hold mm. up. Cause I because he was up. You know what I'm saying? He he was up. He was teeter tottering. They were winning bets. They were losing them, but they were winning them. And then finally, blow, that four and a half million was missing out that bank account. And he's like, hold up. I got to make another four and a half million dollar bet to win my money back? That's not how betting works. Just a four and a half million dollar bet and then that's it. Oh, no. This cat's been betting tens, twenties of millions of dollars, dog. No one wants to talk about this isn't a, just a little thing, Smitty. This ain't just a little ass four and a half million dollar one time theft. Right. And number one, number two, if you're telling me that he don't know what's being taken out of his account, because to the point I just made, it wasn't just a four and a half million dollar bet. This has been going on for a long time. Millions right. and millions of dollars have been bet once they look into it. I guarantee you, or they choose not to look into it. Let's be clear. Because this is something the Major League Baseball had once no part of. I'm sure they're going to throw sweep this under the rug. They should. So I'm trying to figure out why no one's calling him out. But Pete Rose got it. He knew right away. He's just laughing like, I wish I had an interpreter. Because that's how betting works. It's fucking, I'm betting millions. I'm, I'm winning 40% of the time. So I'm. You know, up and you, down. You up and yeah. down, but you but you kind of always up because you. And then he you, lost. Then he, he lost. lost. Then he lost. He, he had a bad few weeks. And somebody caught it, and then and, and the bookie got heat or something. And the bookie's the one that's actually illegal. And then he's in California. He can't really ba- place bets in California legally. So, listen, there's a lot of deeper shit that's going into this Otani shit, but I think he's. I think they need to shut him up. Yeah, he's t- he's getting worse. He needs to get his lawyer because he's he's starting to look real bad, dog. He's starting to look real fucking bad, and and I, I'm just like, uh come on, dog. He's looking real bad in this thing right now because he's basically using counter hypocritical statements, and he's like, I don't know, my money was gone, and I don't know anything about betting. <laughs> like, why, why was your voice like that when you when you was talking like him just, just now? Huh? Huh? What? What'd you say? I didn't hear you. Um, and I was saying, why was your voice the way it was just now when you were uh, impersonating? Asian. That's Asian voice. Oh, okay. Um, so I don't know. But nah, this, this, I ain't gonna lie. This this brother did it. This guy did it for sure. But I hope they don't. I hope they just put it under the rug because he's he for sure. He's for sure. Like it's common sense, bro. Like, I'm from the hood. Like, come on, bro. Ain't no way in hell you let a motherfucker just take millions out of your account. And you don't know. I don't care how rich you are. Millions, motherfucker. That chase, that chase alert would have went off in your text message. Cha-ching! Oh, Tony, someone is uh, taking four million out your out your account. Cha-ching! Someone has taken ten million out of your account. Ain't no way. I I don't trust. Listen. I don't know if there's anybody I trust that much who just got that type of access to my money. Just like that. They can just take millions out like like that. Come on, bro. He, he's definitely involved, but I hope he does not get in trouble because, again, he's great for baseball. He's in L.A. I want to go watch him play. Like If you hope he doesn't get in trouble, then you should hope that Pete Rose gets back in baseball. Listen, I'm from the hood, JB. Gambling ain't really – and don't really affect me too much. You know what I'm saying? I see you. Yeah. That's the thing about it, though. Hood cats wouldn't get nobody give it. Pete Rose, if if it, if it was a black commissioner when Pete Rose was playing, Pete Rose never got a, uh, never got booted. That would have been that would have been in on it with him. That would have been Ben Winnell. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You asking the wrong person, like, but just because they yeah, fucked up Pete Rose and made you do up in the box and shit, like fuck it, it. God right. damn it, Pete! I told you I'm gonna get a base hit. You're right. Talk to him afterwards and shit. <laughs> Another earned run, motherfucker. <laughs> hey, take a commercial break. We're going to come right back and talk more betting as John Tate Porter under investigation by the NBA now over irregularities in betting. Betting, man, the root of all evil right now. We'll be right back in five. I agree with you. 
But man, so Pat's good friends with Trump. I had I, I saw a video the other day. He was out there in Jersey, and fucking Trump walked in with a red tie. And Pat's like, "How fucking strong is that?" And uh, I was dying laughing. Man, Pat sent me the video. Uh, I'm gonna be going to Boston with Pat next week or a couple weeks here um, for the live deal. But um, he, he he, you got a good relationship with him, huh? Daddy Trump, I love him. He's been like a dad to me. I, I've, you know, it's amazing how if people, you know, it's that old saying: if you don't know somebody, then shut up about him. And, no shit. Um, he's one of the greatest human beings. The family's one of the greatest families I've ever met in my life. And, um, you know, what he's going through right now is just crazy. Uh, our country was in such great shape when he was there for four years, and now look at it. Yeah, no doubt. I, I the fucking biden's son's on the air force one today and and trump shit got raided i i just look at it like holy shit are they setting a precedent to do this shit to any and everybody here in the future because if you can raid a former president which has never happened ever they fucking better find some shit or they're gonna be we're gonna be fucked they're not gonna find anything on daddy trump he's he's one of the most honest human beings i've ever known i mean yeah, so he's had some bad bad business deals, but who doesn't? You know what? Oh, he's shit. come out strong. He's got great golf courses where the Liv's probably going to make their home. Yep, uh, yep. Which I don't blame Daddy Trump for when they kind of kicked the rally out through Cadillac, and it wasn't Cadillac's fault. But yeah, uh, I don't know. I just I can't understand why people are going after him so hard when he did he did such an amazing job for four years for our country. Well, look at you know people depict you know perceptions reality. I'm sure. Me and you can probably relate better than anybody how fucking people, you know, think how we are and they've never met us in their life. So, you know, I just I find it crazy how people doing jobs that, uh, you know, have no idea on what we do uh, as a coach or a golfer and being a professional golfer, the top 150 in the world or whatever it is to get a card. And then they're going to sit there and talk about whoever, you know what I mean? Like, oh, oh, John, Daly shot an 80, but he's one of one. Like, people don't get that <laughs> shit. Like, Coach Brown, you're an asshole, but you don't know me. You know what I mean? So they've never well, met Trump. They've never met any of these people. They always want to talk about it. But, you know, it is what it is. I mean. Well, for you, I mean, not getting paid what you probably deserve to get paid, taking care of those kids that are academically struggling from either Division One or even in Division Two. that, you know, and you're doing your job trying to get them academically ready and then, once they do that and they're playing great and they're healthy, they leave and you got to start over again. You've got one of the tough, toughest jobs I've ever seen in my life. And I enjoyed watching it. Let me tell you something. I couldn't keep my eyes off of it. You, you, you're freaking awesome, dude. I love you. So listen, you, you, uh, you won two majors, uh, what five PJ wins and what night you got 20 wins total or, or something like that. As far as the whole, uh, tour professional tour, you got 20 wins, I think. Um, all over the world. I don't know. I don't keep up with it. Yeah, I don't so let's how, put it this how way. It, Coach, man. If I had if you had that record, you never would be coaching. <laughs> hey, you know what though? I equate it to baseball, man. You know these these hitters come up and these greatest hitters of all time, they bat whatever, 320, 310. But if you really look at it, it's really 0.31% because they take so many bats and they gave they give these high rankings. And I'm just like, dog, baseball players really have a shitty hit to strikeout ratio, but but 300 is actually considered good. And uh, it's funny how perception's reality, man. How, how was winning that first tour, man? You come out as a youngster. I remember watching it, man, as a youngster on TV. And uh, I was our fan right away. I was like, this guy's different. He wants to, he's the fucking, uh, you know, the Adam Sandler of professional golf. When that movie came out, you were the guy that brought entertainment. But what, what, uh, what was that like as a youngster winning that first thing and everyone's finding out, okay, this guy's just not a long ball guy. He, he can play. It was, i tell you what, it was like a blur. You know, I didn't get a practice round. So I went right in there, got in there at 2 a.m. Cause I didn't know if I was going to get in the tournament and, Next thing I know, I'm in the tournament and win the damn thing. And I, I didn't know what to expect. And the funny thing is I found out it's a 10-year exemption on the tour and then five years in the majors, lifetime in the PGA. Wow. And I go, if I'd have known that, teeing up Sunday, I would have shot 95. Thank God I didn't know that. <laughs> hey, that's funny how that shit works. That's serious shit, man. I used to, The same shit's happened to me, man. I'm like, shit, that's, that is a psychological killer right there. So I... All right, all right, all right. We are back in the building. Uh, 
Got to stop looking at the chats, Smitty, so I don't cuss people out. A lot of times what I do, I'll just click on our private chat so it just so it just covers up the comment so you don't even see it. You hear me? You're, yeah, you're just low, but I know I know you're low. And my fault. I'm here. I'm going to turn my mic up a little bit. Yeah, oh, no, no, no. It's just, so you're low. just so you know you're in an apartment. You're going to get evicted. So I, I, I make sure we... <sighs> what we going to do, JB? Let, let's discuss for the next two minutes what we going to do to solve this real quick. You know what I mean? To... Uh, Live on the show. We the real show up on the earth. Like, so there is a studio space. I got to find the address where it's like different little sections already set up. We can bring our own props, bring our football, bring our banner, whatever, and have it set up. And they can, they can even help Bailey with cutting some of the like clips and stuff too. Like, like while the show's going on, I don't know how much it would cost. I'm sure we can negotiate something because we will be different than the other show. A lot of time people come there, you know, it's it's like a one off. They'll do one interview and they'll go. We we are a daily show, at least as how we shoot right now. So I wonder if we did a daily show, we could probably negotiate some pricing. But obviously that pricing would be just still that that price still matters. You know what I'm saying? Like if we can get it for five hundred a month and we split it down the middle, that's that's something we probably we can manage. We could do that. But if it's like two thousand a month or something crazy, it could be a little hairy. Then we both got to drive. I don't feel comfortable with you driving an hour and a half every single day. I know you say you could do it, but I don't know how committed you, you will be like six months in to driving an hour and a half every single morning. That's a lot. Well, you got to drive back. It won't be an hour and a half. But then you got to drive back. And I think the drive back is where the traffic's going to come. It won't be an hour and a half going nowhere at four in the morning. I leave miles at four in the morning. It ain't going to be no traffic. It probably, it probably be one hour. It probably be one hour. 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah, that ain't shit to me. But then driving back though at nine at nine after nine thirty, that's when you're gonna hit that traffic. Not, not, not coming back my way when we know traffic. You sure? Yeah, that's everyone li- everyone works out there, lives out here. So I ain't gonna have no issue. That's easy. The drive ain't nothing, you know me. I get in the new drop top and smoke stick. Mm-hmm. That ain't easy. That's shit. Let me I'm, so I'm, I'm doing some calls today. I'm doing some calls today with two people that I know that I think could help us with the with the studio. That may even front the whole space for us just as a write off for them that they need. And it's real right now. Rental office spaces are really premium and a low low price point because right. of, they're trying to get them off. They're trying to get rid of them right now in in, in Cali. It's try, they're trying to rent them out. There's a lot of open spots, so. Let me work on that. JD, uh, you sound crazy. He said, move in with Coach. He got an extra room. <laughs> if I was a college kid or just graduated college and I ain't really got shit going on, yeah, I would. I could hit up JB. We can make that happen. But I'm a grown-ass man. I got shit going on, JD. need to you know get in the studio, set it up, get it all cracking. I got all the shit. We can move, move, move right in. See, the, my lounge is the spot. Your lounge is the perfect spot. I mean, that'd be fire if we could do it. You know what I mean? That, that, that would take for us to make – Dividend, make real revenue where I could pay Smitty, pay myself, pay Bailey, pay a few cats to produce, and we do the show every day in here. That means Smitty, get out of it. We like we're the that's that's, that's we the need. only that's thing. Our main job every day. That's our shit right there. Because I'm not lazy too. I'll be willing. To, like I don't want to put everything on JB. I'll be willing to make the drive too. But the only thing is, like he said, like I I do have like the full time job myself. So it's like, damn, I gotta. There, there, I try to make it back. It's full full time like yeah. that, but we're making that type of money. Then you know, you talk. I wouldn't even. Wives, you talk to the wives, the nurses' jobs out here. You know, they move out here. There's other shit we could do. Or we want Arizona. Uh, Arizona. So we got to figure it out, man. We got to figure it out. So we're gonna see, man. All right, the landlord dive- said I'm good the rest of the week. Let's dive into this Raptors, John. John Tate Porter under investigation by the NBA over multiple instances of betting irregularities. Uh, most of the alleged bets were on Porter's stats being under at least one other U.S. sports book detected unusual betting interest on the Porter's props in the games in question. A sports book industry source, Smitty, told ESPN that multiple betting accounts attempted to bet large amounts upwards of $10,000 and $20,000 on Porter's unders in the January game against the Clippers. What you thinking? What you thinking, JB? Uh, this is just what we're going back to. Like, Well, first of all, I think he's a brother, so off the back, he's innocent. Just off the, off the strength, he's innocent. 
Number he one. looked like Bailey. He looked like Bailey. He looked like Toby Bailey. He looked like Bailey. He looked like a lot of the a lot of Baileys are mixed cats. Toby yeah. Bailey, uh, Moose Bailey, my boy. Shout out to my boy Moose and Toby, Matt Barnes and them. They all boys. I, I know. I know the the Bailey brothers for a while. We played my buddies Charles O'Bannon, Ed O'Bannon. Ba- Bailey's a mixed a mixed name. It's a, it's a mixed name. Yeah. But when you mix, you black man. I don't care. I know Bailey be agreeing with you, but that's because a lot of people who join our show. They know you. They don't know me yet. You know what I mean? They're fans of you from the show, which I respect. That's cool. But Bailey's a brother, though, at the end of the day. If shit hit the fan and, 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 and it, was, it was race wars, Bailey is with us. Trust and believe that, Jay. But he love you, but he going to be on the side with the brothers. That's what it's going to come down to. Nah, that's the thing. He in Tennessee. He's surrounded by a lot of most – unless he go to Memphis, he go, he's surrounded by a bunch of country singing, white boys. You know what I'm saying? He got to he got he on this side. He got to be on hell of brothers down south. What you talking about? I'm not saying I didn't say that. I said oh, unless he's in Memphis, everywhere else in Tennessee, he's the shit. I mean, there's some spots, you know, and and there's some spots in certain places. Knoxville got some brothers. I mean, I've been all over that, one, but Nashville. Let's be honest, Quinn, well. you're wrong, Quinn. Quinn, you're wrong. If you're mixed, you're not. Come on, JB, you educated him. Like, can we keep it real? If you're mixed, my daughter's an uh, exception. My daughter's white. Why? Why? Because she's fair skinned. Because I'm dominant gene. Man, stop, man. Your daughter's a sister at the end of the day. I ain't even remember. Let's have a real talk. The dominant gene comes from the male. See, that's I, it's okay. Listen, I'm glad we're doing this. That's where I always so in the hood, they would always say, whatever but your that's, dad is. That's what, just real life science. But no, but they would always say that. They say, whatever your dad is, that's what you are. That's well, what they would I always mean, say. I don't know if it's true, but I know the dominant gene comes from the male. So in a lot of mixed cases, the dad is the brother. And the mama's the white girl. Let's be honest. That's really, I would say that's the majority. I don't know for a fact. I would say that's the majority because that's like the optic we see, right? Brother with a white girl. My case was different. I was the dad. The mama actually is mixed herself. Oh, you didn't tell me this, JB. I thought you had a sister, like a thoroughbred sister. But wait, now now the mix isn't a sister then. No, no, no. It's not about that. Here you go. So yo, that means your daughter. (laughs) No, listen. That means, no, no. That's more information. That means your daughter is three-fourths fucking European. That means she got a piece of us in her. By the way, her her mama, 5'11", red bone, thick, Beyonce. Sound cold. So three-fourths, she's single? She's a devil, though. (laughs) Bitch is a devil. (laughs) If you Google right now, Bailey, if you Google the Antichrist, she pop up. <laughs> oh my God. Um, let's dive into oh, that's still uh, your daughter's that's still your daughter's mom with JB. Stop. Shout out Don't to T Jones back on my good graces because he says she's white. Um no, she white is white in this situation because she's three, she's literally three fourths white. I didn't know I didn't know your baby mom was mixed. I thought she was like a I'm, I'm thinking like when you said black girl, I thought it was a like dark skin. Even, even, if it was, even if it was though. But see. Her gra- her daddy black though. Yeah, I get it, but I'm saying no, it's a wrap. You're white. Your baby mama is is a half and half. That means your daughter is three fourths white. That means she's predominantly white. She's white now. Like for example, I have some cousins who, now. I have cousins that are fair skinned, but my uncle he was lighter skinned, but he's black. He ain't mixed. He's black. But I'm a white he's white now. My cousins are black. He's black the whole time on this show until. <laughs> <laughs> well, with more information, with new information, I gotta change. Uh, I gotta change my says answer. She white now. I got more information now. <laughs> hey, don't play oh, with me. Hey, 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 I ain't got nothing against white women. Y'all, you look, y'all look good. Y'all do your thing. But listen, I got me a thoroughbred in there. I got me a my fucking dark skin from Detroit, from Seven Mile, Better Mile, Coney Island will cuss me out and cook me food on the same damn night. I'm talking about this right here. I'm talking about like thoroughbred is What's what that? I got in here. See, you don't see. See, you don't know that. You you ain't really grow around black people. See, a lot of time when black women get their braids and they don't want to fuck their hair up, JB. They pat they nah, it's too late. You already asked me. It's okay. You Let me know. ask you, I got, a, I got a poll question for for all the sisters out there because I talked to a few sisters last night and asked them this question. When you get into scraps and fights, because there have been a lot of sisters fighting each other on camera all over the videos they've been crazy bunch of bitches fighting and shit bunch of what females when you when women get they 32 to 46 inch peruvian pulled out when you get it snatched out does it hurt because of the track is still in the just the track still connected mm. so do it hurt when you get your weave pulled out girls black girls in the chat 
Do it hurt when you get your weed pulled out? Yes or no? Too late. I'm going to say yeah. Everyone said it does. Everyone said it do. I love how we just waited, though. We, were, we really were waiting to see what they were doing. It just don't come out free. I know. It, they got it, like, glued and attached and braided and twisted in there. So, that I don't know. By the way, everyone does do this. All the dudes, too. See, see, my wife, my wife be natural. My wife don't really, she didn't wear, she probably wore weave once in our relationship, once or twice. She she's be natural with it. I, I like it. I, I like, listen. I like a natural woman. That don't mean you can't get your, your enhancements, do your thing. That don't mean you can't do weave, do your thing. All that stuff. My my wife, she get the lashes. She get the lashes done. But I like that natural, though. I like I like flaws and all. I like the natural breasts hanging. I like the natural ass hanging. You got a little chubbiness to you. That's okay. I like to eat, too, baby girl. Keep that hair just hanging. When I say baby girl, I don't mean baby girl. Literally, I mean baby girl. It's in the general, a general statement. Like, be natural. That's what I like. Flows in the hole. I only do natural. So I you did not, say that. You did I, say that. I will not do fake. JB said he said if you you could be a bad woman, everything natural, but you got fake breasts. It's a wrap. Like he not even anything fake on you. He's not talking to you. Fake fake breasts ain't that big of a deal to me though. Because you gotta understand, That's a woman right. can be in a woman can be in a phenomenal shape, but like no matter what workout you do, there's nothing they can do to like. Lift their breasts, so that's why women. You'll often see women who are great, like athletes, athletic build and shape. They'll get like enhancements on their on their chest just so they can sit up and it matches the rest of their body. I, I actually love stretch marks. I do too. I like stretch marks. I like real shit. I like, I like real shit. Too. I want I like real ass too. stretch marks on that ass, on the thighs, Ooh, man. man. I want titty. I can't get my nuts lifted up. <laughs> Motherfuckers, you probably could though. I don't know. They probably do got a surgery like that. You know how they say when you get old, white, you're gonna get old grandpa nuts. Yeah. Well, can I hold them up? Like, I don't I think women a, care about your nuts though, I, really. I too get a much. ball bra. <laughs> I don't think women care about how your balls hang. I don't know. I, I ain't really heard no woman ever be like, oh no, your balls hang. I don't even, I can't rock with you. They ain't really, yeah. they ain't worried about they, that. They don't see them on the day. You see your titty cleavage, whatever. You can see, you can see it. Right. Um, again, goes back to women coaching in the NFL. <laughs> See, they try. They try to make it about a woman's world, Smitty. I'm telling you, you better get with me on this take, homie. They trying to make everything about the women, dog. I'm telling you. What about our balls, Smitty? Why don't nobody care about our shit, homie? See, they're trying to inclusive everything. Come back to women coaches. <laughs> We gotta do a skit, bro. We gotta do it. That's how I come over, man. You can't be on your lazy shit. We gotta do a skit next time, man. We gotta do that. That's that's, a, that's hilarious. Everything's a woman's fault. This motherfucker's. Hey, at least I'm consistent. Let's stay with uh. Let's get on to this now. This let's let's get into the brass tacks here before right, Steve gets up, Tom. Because I just got a phone call from Whitlock. I gotta go on his show now. Today is gonna be crazy. Hey, what what I be punking y'all, boy? And hey, he don't ask you like, nah, you on my show? And y'all be y'all be y'all jump into it. See, we're like, never did me like that. We're like, no, like, it's just, it's... <laughs> punk me all you want. <laughs> That's how I pay you. All right. Caleb Williams makes a, I'm not going to say what Bailey put in there. See, Bailey was setting me up right now. I was about to read what Bailey wrote, and I was about, uh, shit. You know what Bailey wrote? What do you write? <laughs> so we're going to say it anyway, then. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like, you defeat the whole purpose. Like, right. You still going to say Caleb it. Williams makes fruity appearance. At women's basketball game. <laughs> Bailey. <laughs> the vibe is going to see this episode. They watching live right now. This is kind of see if they want to meet with us and shit. And see, if, see if it makes sense. Nigga like, nah, we going to pass. <laughs> I fucked you on that, Smitty. Uh, I got to. No, no you good. Not, you good. You good. You good. Hey, so. <sighs> that'd be nice, though. <sighs> but I've been watching them. They be cussing on there. Yeah, they cut. They do it. All right. Of course, bro. Nightcap is on the volume. They That's be going talking. Yeah. I'm like, are you sure that? They, they but, but, but. Yeah, yeah you know, I'm a little different. <laughs> you, I'm, a, you I'm said, a whole other cat. They you look said at a me different one. Devil. I mean, I gotta tell you right now. And if I met him in person, they'd be like, "Damn, yeah, JB, real love, love JB." But I'm the devil if you never met me. 
But they be asking me, they be like, man, how, hey, how is JB? I saw you doing the show. They be like, everybody be side eyeing. I'm like, yeah, he cool as hell. You like, okay, okay, man, man, man. That shit crazy, ain't it? It's crazy that having people really be seeing our shit, though. The like, narrative really, oh, yeah, we be, we're watching. Like, I be at Fox and they be asking me. Don't so they, get it twisted. See we're watched. We're yeah. watched. But I'm just trying to figure out, like, cats really have that narrative, though. That To me, it blows me. I, I get embarrassed by grown people that judge a cat that they've never met. Right. I, I just reserve. I'll give you my opinion on a cat like Kayla Williams. Like, man. But I've never met him. And I'll say, listen, this cat could be the greatest kid ever. Or, or what? I'll say whatever. I don't know because I know how it is to be that cat being judged. But right. let's dive into Kayla Williams. Can we show the video and pause oh. it? Because I got a few other people that hit me up about this. Does he? I want to question, first of all. Does he have lipstick on is the question I've been asked many times. Nah, he just, nah. He, uh, I know why y'all asking that, but nah. He, I think he just, just a black, you know, black, you don't say it. I can say it. Black people, we do have, tend to have like larger lips. And sometimes I just, you know what I mean? It just is what it why is. Why can't I say it? I say it all the time about bras. All the time. I love sister lips. <laughs> yeah, but you, you know. They already yeah. think you. They already think you racist. So I don't want to put you in that position. Yeah. Now his nails are definitely painted, though. Oh, his nails are painted again. Can, can't you tell? Y'all don't see that? Or am I tripping? <laughs> am, am I tripping? Yeah, like zoom are in. Those pearl? Are, are those pearl? He got a, like like a gold French tip. It don't. If you say gold French tip, <laughs> not the first quarterback off the board, homie. He gonna, be, my shit. he gonna be if throwing you say that thing. Old French tips. He gonna be he gonna be throwing that thing. Maybe maybe they're, they're just glossy though. Maybe I'm tripping. Am I tripping? Nah, I think they're painted, homie. The girls say they're painted, bro. The women know. Some even said they're fake nails. He got acrylic. Hey, he in there throwing that ball though. He's okay, let me let you know. So listen, he's got. Go back to that picture. He got that's his, that's his sister phone. I heard you heard. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I can't validate. I have no idea. I think it's his we sister's phone. We'd be trying to defend. No, for, online it says it was his sister's phone or something like that. All right, so him. allegedly, well, I posted that just as a joke. I said, "Hey, it could be his girl's phone. Could be his sister's. I don't know." Right. The keys. The keys are alarming too. The, is that his girl's key? Because you know, mostly that looks like a woman's keys for their car, right? I think his girl or his sister, whoever he was with, went to like the bathroom. Said, "Hey, can you hold this for me?" And that's just so happened when he held it, and he was. That's why he's holding it like that. Because if it was just his, it would just be in his pocket or something. I think he's literally holding somebody's stuff to his defense, and the camera came on him, and he's just dancing and vibing. What, what's the other man? thing in front of the phone? Like a wallet, I think. It's like a. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's like a, it's like a key, a wallet, and a phone that he's holding of his sister or a girl, whoever he with. And they just don't have to put the camera on them. What's he what's moment. he doing with his movement of his hands? Let me let me see. Play the video. Just dancing. He just vibing. He just vibing. That's just a little windshield wiper. That ain't really nothing too much. We overvaluate anybody who's like a big name. I will say that in, in the media. When I say we, I mean all of us in sports media. We do. We do. We we dive. We ain't doing this right now to Brock Bowers. We ain't diving to how he, he's walking and looking. And his, we ain't doing some Marvin Harrison Jr. What he's doing. Right, he's one pick. He's not the Bo, hype. Bo Nix. We Jay, do hype. He's not Jay the hype. Daniels is going to be number two pick. We ain't even brought him up on this show. We ain't brought him up on this show. Hey, be real though. We don't know what he's doing. Daniels ain't out there doing that though. I don't know what he's doing. We ain't. We, ain't, we been... ain't seen it, or we would be talking about it. Let's keep it real. You say it every day. We only talk about it because we talk about it. <laughs> like you got to have something to talk about. Where's Jaden Daniel? Where's Jaden Daniel? Shit at? We can pull up. I'm gonna go to Twitter right now and just type in his name and see see what's going on. You ain't gonna see none of that shit. Let me see. I, I know his daddy. I know his mama. You ain't gonna see that shit. I'm telling you right now. I'm just telling you right now. I. You ain't going to see that shit. You might see some young generational shit that I just dis dislike, but you ain't going to see that shit right there. I'm just telling you right now, and I don't even know what's on Jaden Daniels' fucking Twitter. How would you like, define that shit that we just saw? Uh, uh, 
<laughs> leadership is what I look at comes to my mind. I, I'm glad the Bears, what's the the, the the corner that just signed, called him Jaylen out. Jalen Johnson, like, Jalen Johnson. Jalen Johnson called him out. Was like, don't bring that Hollywood shit here. We'll call it Holly Weird, maybe now. Call it Holly Weird. We're gonna, we're gonna see, dive man. into Caleb Williams. We're gonna dive into Caleb Williams because if it let's just say if it was his sister's or girl, does he have a girl? I don't know if he has a girl. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I I'm gonna be honest, anybody. he gives me a certain vibe. He gives Listen. me a certain vibe of how he portrays himself. I'm just gonna say that. I'm not I'm not saying he is that or that. I'm saying he gives me a vibe of how he portrays himself. And he wouldn't be the first one. No, he wouldn't. At all. So he could still go out there and ball out and go throw 40 touchdowns and seven picks as a rookie. Good, but the odds are he won't. Why is that? CJ Stroud just did it. CJ Stroud does not give that vibe. Oh, of course not. I'm, I'm talking this football I'm right now. About that vibe. We're only talking about this guy's vibe. But what that vibe got to do with him yeah, throwing I the football? I thought your point was we've seen guys with this vibe before. Yeah, it, I'm and, sorry. It, I'm all over the place. That was my initial vibe, but now I'm back on the skill set vibe. From a skill set standpoint, he has the skill set of a CJ Stroud. A skill set. No, he doesn't. So like, huh? No, he does not have a skill set of CJ Stroud. No, he doesn't. I don't know who told you that. I don't. I don't understand why people can sit here and. T- I, I haven't heard that. I don't know where you heard that from. Two completely different. One six four. One six foot. One's over the top delivery. One is a three quarter delivery. One is a move around the pocket guy. One is a pocket guy. It's completely different. Caleb is not standing in there and throwing the ball over the middle. It's taking a chin shot. Caleb is. I mean, CJ is. Completely different skill set. CJ has a much bigger arm, much more accurate. I don't know where you got the same skill set. I don't know who, who told you that. So maybe you heard that from somebody. I don't know. But that's not true. I'm just well, you, your homie. I'm telling you, as a homie, I'm telling you, it's not true. I and I respect you, the quarterback guru. I'm not gonna ever tell you wrong. All I'm saying is when you when you look at just the raw skill set, like you keep saying, Kayla Williams ain't, ain't don't have a big arm. I got this. Kyler Murray esque. Well, Kyler Murray didn't get this. I, 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 Kyler all. Murray has a big arm. He, Kyler Murray has a big time arm, but he's small. The the, the the launching point, his his platform. We call it a platform. His platform's lower. Caleb ain't small like Kyler though. How harder to get out? Kyler's put together now. Yeah, I know. I know what I'm saying. Oh. But Caleb ain't that small, though. But I, I'm just saying they're both roughly – Kyler's shorter. Uh, I think Kyler would be thicker. Caleb looks thick, sloppy, though. Kyler doesn't. Even though Kyler can get that way when he got injured, he kind of looks sloppy. But they're very similar, I'm telling you. If you look at Kyler, look at Caleb. They're very similar. Sean King has said it on the show. Uh, we've had other guys like, like uh, you know – Da has said it on this show. Very similar in stature. Very similar in and 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 how they play as well. They take their drop. They get to the drop, which they never stops. By the way, a drop that never hits their third or fifth step consistently is a problem. What do I mean? I answer you, Jay uh, Smitty. What I mean is when you take a three step. And you don't hitch up or throw on your third step on time, transfer your weight, accurate football, know where you're throwing the ball is a problem because you never see Kyler Murray hit his third or fifth step and throw it. You never see Caleb Williams do that either. What they do is they hit their third. They don't like it and they immediately spin out or escape the pocket. So they never hit their third step or fifth step, climb the pocket, work the pocket, manipulate the pocket with their feet and their eyes. Manipulate the coverage with your eyes. You manipulate the pocket with your feet. They don't do that. They're escaping right away because they don't know what they're looking for. They don't know what they're looking at. So they hit the, they hit the shit and get out of there. That's what you see in both Caleb, Kyler, Justin Fields, Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson. I can go on and on and on. And then, so I'm not racist. This is what you see with Baker Mayfield, Carson Wentz, Derek Carr. The list goes on and on and on and on. The quarterback product in overall is horrific. Like I've been saying over and over and over and over. 
It ain't about black. It ain't about white. It's about development, fundamentals, and being able to dissect what you see, and that is what you see in the NFL. All colors, shapes, sizes. We're shitty. Real quick, Jimmy, let me ask you this. Is, is it safe to say that none of us know really what's going to happen with any of these players? And we're all just guessing. Yeah, it is. And we and we and we do this every single year. None of us, none of us would have predicted that CJ Stroud would have had that great of a year. No, none of us came in this. I like CJ. I'm sure you like CJ. You know who he is, you know his parents. But none I of us, do have receipts. None of us went into last season. But I do have receipts. And said, this is about the ball to this level. But I do have receipts saying he would be the best. Cool. That cool. cool. That's great. And I, I remember you saying that. I have receipts saying that I would take him over Lamar week one. Of course, I was on this show. Viral video. I was on this show. Oh, after I after after one or two CJ, games, you said that. I did have CJ over all the rest of them, contrary to everyone's belief that I don't know shit. So you did say that, but we did I not know. Let's he we just keep it all the way. Caliber, I would be lying if I thank said you. all right, thank you. That's all I'm saying. So, so cool. No, me too. Me too. We all the same thing. If I don't know if you said that and has it on video, they 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 got lucky. Like it'll exactly. be exactly. Like, I nobody would have thought. So my point like, saying that is, we really don't know about none of these quarterbacks in this draft. Michael Penix Jr. might be healthy and end up being the best quarterback in this draft, and it will, honestly would not shock me because that motherfucker was a beast and he's a veteran and he played a lot of football and had a lot of highs and lows and can sling the ball like no other. I saw the highs, so I, I, we really have no idea. System matters, uh, surrounding matters, yeah, opportunity matters. We you really don't know. You met this man in person. He came up to you. Was like, man, tell JB I love him. You love you, Smitty. Your takes, blah blah blah. He said, I said he loves my content. He said JB's crazy as hell. Call him right now. CJ Stroud, right? CJ Stroud, yeah. You know, by being around certain people, you have a vibe about your, about people, right? You have a vibe. You can understand who they are, kind of what they are, right away. Yeah. You never met Caleb, or maybe you have. I don't know. No, first time. That was my first time. Well, no, no, I was at Caleb. No, 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 never met Caleb. Never met Caleb. Never met Caleb. All right, you have a, you have, before you even met CJ, you had a th assumption of what you thought of him, and then you had an assumption of what you thought of him. You met CJ, and now you, you, you met him. You got his energy in the room next to you, blah, blah, blah. You can't sit here and tell me that I'm not correct as far as what I'm talking about with this kid's character versus the kid we haven't met yet, but what we see. Because we never saw this with CJ. We never right. saw anything like this with CJ. And then you got to meet him, and now you put it together, and you're like, oh, fuck. This motherfucker is real deal. Now, yeah, real. Cool. CJ real. now you see the difference. And now I'm like, I got to get into, okay, this guy's going to be a leader. He's going to be, he's a leader. CJ's a leader. Players love him. Players listen up to him in the lock, in, in the huddle. Yeah. yeah, like you don't see that with CJ. I mean, with uh, or with Caleb. Caleb. So, in all fairness, I get I, I got to meet Buddy though. I got to meet him before I give yeah, him a full yeah. evaluation. I, I I, see, I see. I have a see. I there's certain cats I can say that for. I don't need to meet him. I don't need to meet him. I'm just telling you right now. I, I have certain judgmental things that I'm like a savant at, and and that's one of them. Before I don't. Before I met you, JB, I didn't really know. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know. The, you didn't. You didn't know certain things. You didn't ever had to question. Those things. <laughs> well, I, I thought you might not. <laughs> All right. Let's dive into our Miami hurricane specialist, our Korean coach sale, the uh, Buddy is there. crouching tiger hidden gems with Steve Kim. Clap it up. Bring Steve in. Steve, you out of the picture. Hold um, on, hold on, hold on. I thought you got taller even. I was like, yeah. yeah. Yao right, there we go. Korean Yao he already 6'3". <laughs> hey, hey, Steve, uh, right out the gate, I, Whitlock just called me before the show. He wants you to come on now about Caleb Williams. And I want to get your Shador Sanders take from yesterday, though, first. Uh, Top five pick. He's going to play in any – you know what? He's going to start his own team, his own league. He's just going to say, you know what? I'm better than the NFL. Him and Travis Hunter, it's going to be 2 on 11. I can't wait. Yeah. They're just going to draft themselves. That's what's going to happen. Oh, man. I'm I'm kind of getting over it, Steve. I'm going to be honest with you. I think I just can't do it. Like, this is a slap in every coach player that actually came from a bad environment and the so-called mud that he says he came from uh, blows my mind. His takes just get worse and worse, and I'm just like – I, I said it before, Steve. 
comes back to his daddy and his head football coach, who happens to be, once again, his daddy, for allowing this kid to say what he wants, to be in the meetings, to be around other grown coaches, thinking he's an equal, has allowed this. No humility, and I'm tired of it. Yeah, you know, and it's funny, Travis Hunter gets uh, lumped in here. I like Travis a lot. I think he's a top five talent. Uh, and he really doesn't say much. I know. He, he, he plays he video doesn't. games. He kind of stays in his own lane. You don't get the same vibe. Yeah, but he gets lumped in there. But, you know, it's interesting. Me and Whitlock did talk about it yesterday, about Coach Sanders' statement that, hey, we're going to only go to certain cities, certain teams, certain organizations. We're going to pull an Eli. You know, that's fine. I, I don't get angry over that. I really don't. The guys have done it. They've leveraged their ability in their situations, John Elway, Eli Manning. But here's here's the question, and here's the point that I made yesterday on Fearless. Are you willing to do a Bo Jackson? People forget Bo Jackson was the number one pick in 1986. He told the Buccaneers and Hugh Culverhouse, their owner, you ruined my last year of baseball at Auburn. You told me I could take this trip to see you guys, and the NCAA pulled my eligibility, and he said, I'm never going to play for you. Buccaneers thought, no, 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 we can offer him enough money. He'll play. He didn't play. He had to go back into the 87 draft. People kind of forgot about it. And Al Davis said, hey, let's take that left fielder out of Kansas City. Well, he ended up having a new hobby. If you have the courage and the balls of your convictions, you can do this. But it would be interesting. Let's say Shadour is solid, but not a top five pick. He goes 18th to a team that needs a quarterback, but it's one of those cities that doesn't fit the culture. Okay. I would like to see that team say, yeah, uh, you're going to report to training camp, right? And they say, no, nope, we're not. And they're going to say, okay, good. We're just going to hold your rights. All right, give up a year. Give up a year and re-enter the draft. That's fine. The game will move on with or without Shador Sanders in a city that he wants. That's, That's a good point. I know Smitty mm. has some. Because I, I don't know if he'll be a five top five. And that would be the only chance, in, a snowball's chance in hell, that he would have a shot to dictate what Dion's saying. But if he falls to 18, 20, second round, there's no shot. Now you're, what are you going to do? Go back to college? And then Darnell, I didn't know this, but then they listed specific teams and cities like Baltimore. You know, I didn't think Baltimore needed a quarterback. I think they're kind of good there. (laughs) That guy seems to have another eight, nine years left, right? Right. Uh, then, Then he listed like San Francisco. They seem to have hitched their wagon to Brock Purdy. So, again, do you want to go with the perfect city where you're going to be a backup or do you actually want to play and create a career? Look, I get it. You don't have to like the draft system, but that system is the system. But if you are willing to sit out a whole year and give up a whole year of service time, go ahead. You're allowed to do that. Yeah. Maybe maybe he's cool with Shador being a backup, which probably would be a great thing, honestly. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> you know damn well that family's not cool. With I know, but like to Steve's point, why are you mentioning only the top teams that don't need quarterbacks? That makes zero sense. Right. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> here's what I find hypocritical in this whole thing. This is the part I find hypocritical. Um, the dad, Dion, Dion, Coach Sanders, I like to call him now. He is saying it's a cultural thing. Where, what city you go to? But you're the head coach that brought your son to Boulder. Colorado, the whitest city in the union. Now, I don't know if that's fact, but I'm, allegedly that's a white city. I know that for a fact. That is a white city. I don't know if it's the whitest city, but it's pretty damn yeah. white. And I'm going to be straight honest. What's the difference? Why can't he go now to Seattle or fucking Nashville? I don't understand what the culture has to do with it. He's in Colorado. Like, that ain't a black city, homie, or a state. You know what's funny? When he got drafted, this is one of the funniest stories. I I told this on Fearless. I remember watching it. So the Lions have the number three pick. And Atlanta scored. And there was a debate over which Sanders they were going to take. Either one was a Hall of Fame or all-time great. So Detroit, which is a black city, they have a lot of black leadership, black populace. They took Barry. I think they did okay there. Atlanta takes Dion at four. So they're in his house. Dion has a big party. He has his, you know, everything's going. Andrea Kramer, I think, was the reporter. She goes, Oh man, Dion, I know you didn't want to go to Detroit. Aren't you glad? Go, no, 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 no. 
I, with Detroit, he goes, I would have asked for so much, they would have to put me on layaway. Lay <laughs> yeah, so I, I start calling him Chess King Sanders. You know, so look, I, I, it's all about the culture till you get to the team you really want to be on. I, I mean, do you want to win then? Let's say you're in a great city for you, but you're going 5-12 and 12 each year. Can, can you live with it? Okay, that, that's what you want. That's what you want. See, I think people are taking this way too seriously. I really do. The NFL will move on with or without Shadour and Travis Hunter. The game is the game. The shield is the shield. Uh, I have never stopped watching the game over a particular rule or a player sitting out. I, I just say, hey, the game's going to game. It will move on. That's why I tell fighters when they announce their retirement that lasts all of two weeks. I say, good luck with that. When you fight, I'll watch you. And if you don't, which you never really do because you're so inactive, I will move on too. We're good. That's true. Yeah. That's true, man. I just don't like the I came from the mud thing. You, you couldn't play in high school at a 6A Texas school. That's why you went to private school. So your daddy had you in a private space where you were protected and coddled. And, and you're talking about a tough life and you came from the mud. I, I just don't get it. I, I, I don't like the, the verbiage. I don't like how he said it. I just I think it's a slap in a bunch of people's faces. Um, but it is what it is. I gotta, I, I gotta, I want to dive into something with you real quick. Uh, Cam Newton came on his show Athletic. and said, "The state of Georgia is the most athletic state. California, somebody gonna say California, California. cool. Somebody gonna say Florida too. But per, I mean, dog, we're talking about a state that's not that big. Mm -hmm. California, you got so much space, <laughs> Florida." Yeah. Take IMG out of it. Okay. That's a boarding school. People from other states go to I that don't count. I'm talking about born and raised. raised in that state where it's real high school. Mm -hmm. Where are you from? Georgia. Georgia. So, let's so just, hold on. Hold on. Let's just keep Cam it. Newton is saying Georgia is the most talented homegrown state in the United States. Yes. It's not even close. Huh. Well, here's the thing about IMG, which is in Bradenton, Florida. That That's one of those magnet schools that's a sports academy. And I think they have two separate teams, one that plays a national schedule and one that plays more of a local, more or less. I don't want to say their JV team, but it's their B team. Um, there have been studies that the Dade County Broward area per capita, capita produces more NFL talent than anybody. And when you talk to people in Florida or South Florida, they don't claim IMG. They basically claim Miami Northwestern, Miami Central, Carroll City, schools of that ilk. Uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, which is a private school. Uh, American Heritage, which has become an absolute factory for Division One talent. I mean, you could use whatever stats you want. And California's always been top three or four. Ohio's actually really good at producing talent. Yeah, but Indiana, surprisingly. Yeah, so uh, Texas, but Texas again. But here's the funny thing. Cam kept saying per capita, but then he keeps ringing up. But you guys are so big. Cam, stick with the per capita, bro. You, you're kind of going against what you said. We're not talking about the size. Uh, but I love you that if you put together an all team, let's say the last 30 years of football, it'd be pretty tough to beat. You got every mm. position. They're pretty loaded. JB, what you think? I mean, you, you were the ultimate re recruiter. You went to all these states to recruit and get talent. So I feel like if anybody knows, it would be you. Does he, does he uh, make a case? Listen, it's very intriguing. Very, it's. A, it, I won't say he's wrong, um, but I'm not. Here's the thing. Florida is a much bigger state, as he said, and there's so many pockets in Florida, like from Deerfield Beach to Everglades to Apopka to – uh, D Dillard, which had, I think, Dillard and Long Beach Poly go back and forth for the most players in the NFL. Long Beach Poly here in Cali and Dillard, uh, this home of Ray Lewis and so many others. There's, I recruited all of them. I've had players from all of them. Their pockets in Florida are, are unbelievable. Georgia, to be real about it, like Colquitt County, uh, Lowndes, which used to be a powerhouse. And then you obviously... North you know, Carolina. you got, you, got uh, you know, over the last few years, Georgia has put together a few schools that have been powerhouses. Um, to me, South Carolina per capita, which is a much smaller space than even Georgia, it, it's my favorite place to recruit is South Carolina. 
Now, I've had the most raw talent out of South Carolina. I would argue his Georgia take to a comparable state, and that would be Louisiana. Louisiana has some of the most unbelievable talent I've ever seen, and it comes from another smaller rural town like Georgia, Louisiana. Very Alabama even has a lot. The per capita thing is very interesting Like because Georgia is not – as small as he said it is either. Georgia's a pretty big state, borders Columbia, South Carolina to the north, and it borders down south to Florida and Alabama. And, like, there's some talent there. I don't know if I, – I can't say he's wrong. Georgia has dogs, but per capita, I, I would have to go elsewhere. I would probably say South Carolina, Louisiana, uh, mm. even smaller states. Um, Georgia's a pretty big state, dog, and they have Atlanta. South Carolina doesn't have Atlanta. Either does either does Louisiana, New Orleans, but it's not Atlanta size. Um, Atlanta's by far, I think, what top four biggest cities in the country. I think Atlanta by itself takes them out of that topic. Uh, that talk doesn't hold water. So very interesting, though, because it is interesting. Can't say Texas. Texas is much too large of a state, just like California. But California, and Florida have the most NFL talent, I believe, with Texas. So, I mean, those three states by population have the most NFL talent. But Georgia does have uh, a lot of talent. I don't know. Um, all right. All right. Uh, I got to get your Caleb Williams take. Um, let's, let's just say that the phone was his sister's girlfriend. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's say that. But what about that? <laughs> And his nails are painted. Uh, Smitty has verified, and the women in the chat have verified that his nails are painted right there. Is that who you want to draft first? Just that's all my question. No, even before that, I, I told people, if I'm Chicago, I put that number one pick up for sale. Put it up for ransom. See what you can get. I, I've been off Caleb Williams for a long time. Let's just put it that way. He wouldn't be my type of guy that I think I could bring into a locker room and an organization and say, here's your leader for the next dozen years. Honestly, um, if I was the Bears, I would have kept Justin Fields and made sure I got Marvin Harrison. But again, I know Justin Fields comes with limitations, but Caleb Williams gives me a bad vibe. Let's just put it this way, and I'll be on the record. I could be wrong. Jaden Daniels is my QB1, clearly in this draft class. So and when it comes to Caleb, that right there is not anything that would change my mind. I would just say that's another piece of evidence or more confirmation of how I felt coming into last night. Mm. That's the other point. I mean, listen, I was just talking to JB before. I said, listen, we, we all have reservations on him based upon just all the information, the way he was moving around the combine, you know, not the fact that he didn't participate. We've had other guys not participate. Just the way he just was – his demeanor walking around, he just seems so like cocky and full and full of himself, you know. And then it just you start to add up all the, you know, his dad allegedly wanted ownership in a team and just all these little just building blocks and add, add on top of each other. It just makes you feel like, man, like I don't know if that's the guy. But to that point, we don't know. Because at the end of the day, so many years we, we go into a draft and we say, This guy's gonna be the next guy, the Hall of Fame. This guy's gonna be a bust. And we never really know until we see them go go out on that field and play. Keller Williams very well may go out there in Chicago and throw 35 touchdowns, seven picks, and make the playoffs because, let's be honest, this Bears team is pretty damn good right now on paper. Defensively, they're good. They're, they're going to give them help, but I have some concerns about Caleb Williams' ability and willingness to play on time consistently. Mm -hmm. For every play you make that is spectacular where you're running around and you're extending the play, and you throw the ball across your body 50 yards downfield, that is great. Uh, but that's like that guy in basketball that could dunk over three people. Can he consistently hit an outside shot with nobody on him? Mm. Or with a guy who's closing out defensively? you got to be able to master the routine at the highest level of any sport. If you cannot do the routine at a high level, you're not going to be very good. There's a lot of good highlight tapes. What really matters is game film, complete game film to top to bottom. Caleb Williams, to me, one of the things he does, is, and it really showed in the Notre Dame game, he tends to fade back into the pocket and throw off his back foot. His mechanics do break down. 
um, yeah. especially with pressure right in his face. Now, again, to be fair, most quarterbacks don't like that pressure up the A gap. It's the most difficult yeah. pressure to deal with, in my view, as a quarterback. But there's but that Notre Dame game I thought was really alarming those first two quarters. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, shout out CJB. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm very alarmed, man, on this the NFL and in the draft. Uh, this quarterback class. Uh, I'm with uh, Merrill Hodge. I don't see a person in this draft. I, I don't think a person has drafted a guy to be in the league 10 years. And if Hodge says it, I'll say it. I mean, I, I still recall it, Merrill Hodge getting on shows where Skip Bayless and uh, Stephen A. Myth were, like, uh, bloviating about how great Johnny football was, and Hodge just gets up there. Uh, play. Can't watch tape. And they're just like, oh, my God. And he just said, no, I just saw the tape. The tape doesn't lie. And here's the thing that gets me about certain media members. You know which ones they are who have now gone up for caping for Caleb. It's almost like they want to do a manicure or something. They get so offended by anyone being critical of Caleb. Here's the thing. Most of the individuals who are critical of that guy are actually just watching the game film. Right. They're not bringing up all this ancillary stuff. They're just watching a game film saying, oh, we're alarmed. You know? The ancillary stuff is what alarm blows me away. Like, that's just adding to the film we've right. seen. It doesn't like, help. It does understand. not help. Yeah. Because the we know at quarterback, so much of the role is also like intangibles, just being real. You know what I'm saying? Even outside the skill set. So when you start seeing some of those ancillary things, it just makes you question the leadership ability. But like Steve said, I mean, watch the tape. I watched them a lot last year. And I'm not no I'm not a quarterback whisperer, but I do understand the position. And for me, the biggest thing that stood out for me is that in every big game, he 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 didn't ball out. He didn't, he never, it was never a big moment where I was like, oh man, like Caleb led this team through adversity, uh, you know, all odds were against him, you know, he put the team on his back and he won. No, he he seemed to fold in any big game, any big moment that USC could have really, like, took that leap, whether it was Utah, whether it was Notre Dame. I mean, the list goes on and on. So it just makes me concerned. It's like, dang, as an NFL team, you're going to go through battles every Sunday. I don't care what team you're playing against. NFL games are hard to win. How are you going to, uh, uh, you know, handle f the face of adversity and to well, for what i've seen he hasn't handled it well so i don't know we'll see man it's that's it we never we will never know until they step out on the field you know Steve. playing for usc being that quarterback is not easy though to be fair because there was a yeah. pressure on caleb hey i gotta score 45 points and we still may not win that's a very yeah. difficult way to play quarterback yeah. at the next level you have to realize a lot of games are going to be in the low 20s so you better understand, uh, these drives have to end in some sort of kick, a PAT, punt, or a field goal. Let plays die. If the horse is dead, stop kicking it, move on. Um, and you can't always think, I got to make a play here. You don't. But the issue with Caleb is, can you just consistently make the routine play? If he can do that, he's okay. But his size is not great. And keep this in mind, at this level, those throwing windows become a lot smaller. I mean, Lincoln Riley, for as flawed as he might be as a head coach, he can scheme things up where guys are dead-ass wide open by themselves, right? That doesn't happen a lot at the National Football League. Yeah, that is true. That's a good point. The defense was horrible, like horrific this year. He won't. It won't be that bad here in the NFL, so. So that's a good point. We'll see, man. He might end up balling out, Steve and JB. He might end up being rookie of the year. Uh, 11 game, you know, wins the division, goes to the playoffs, and we could all be wrong. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Steve, let's dive into something. I'm just fucking with you. Uh, yeah, I got to ask yeah, you, yeah. two NFL rule changes have hit the wire, and we talked months ago, and I was specifically talking to you about this rule, which I said is worse than targeting, and you were like, really? And we had a discussion about it, the hip drop tackle. Um, I, my consigliaries and head and other coaching buddies and other people in the peers of this game have always talked about the hip drop. We never would in our wildest dreams say it should be banned. We just said it's worse sometimes than the head drama that everyone is blown out of proportion, we feel. So they banned it, Steve. I want to show you a couple clips and I want to get your take on what would what would you do then? So we have Megatron, uh, not Megatron, uh, DJ Metcalf 
on the famous walk you down play that got him kind of going in his career that a uh, hustle play this is the tackle is it not steve <laughs> that, that looks like a tackle that just so, looks bad. i wouldn't label that a hip drop but, but again, so are I'm, they gonna call that play are they gonna call that see i always thought the hip drop was when you came from the side and then went back and dropped i didn't think just chasing a guy down was labeled a hip drop but yeah, I could be wrong. Uh, and, and we have, I want to show you what NFL is going to be next year. I want to show you what it's going to look like. And it's going to look like this. This is my opinion. Yeah, really I mean. Horrible tackling, but this is going to even get worse. Like this well, is coach, going to be what you Is the see. hip drop a de-evolution from the rugby style tackling that they tried to bring this in? This is what you're going to see right here on Mahomes. Look. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Buddy Ryan, Buddy Ryan must be rolling over in his grave. I mean, he would put bounties out for guys. I just, I miss those good old days of the bounties. You know, that's when football is a real game. But anyway, um, <laughs> I remember years ago, you started seeing these big donuts on the field. Uh, Manny Diaz, when he was at Miami, he started like really preaching about the uh, the rugby style tackling, and he was Miami. Miami's tackling in, in his era was the worst in the country. They had stats about it. Um, and I think that the hip drop was a de-evolution of that. And I was told by people that are at practice, Miami doesn't hit nearly enough. And it showed in the games. There was this one game against Michigan State. They could not or would not tackle. It's a mentality. you got to sharpen that blade, as I like to say. But I, ne I don't like the rugby style tackling. I just think, to me, uh, you complicate the thing. And now – guys have kind of adjusted it i know people might disagree but um anytime i see one of those big donuts on a football field i'm like oh god what are we doing why don't we just go flag football next jesus christ well, it, it started steve with the remote control bags so we yeah. had bags and now they were on remote control and they were tackling dummies now we had to tackle a moving bag and everybody thought it was cute and i refused to get them at indy I was like, fuck, no, I'm not getting that shit. We're going to tackle bodies. Right, right. because you got to learn how to take contact, too. It's, yeah. You know, the it's like. not dropping its shoulders, Smitty. The bag's not going to have a helmet on and give you inertia. You know. But, like, there's no. I just don't understand why we're trying to play a physical sport and practice it in a safe space. You know, know what I'm saying? It doesn't make sense. Go ahead, this, is, this is the boxing version of mitt work everyone wants to do the fancy mitt work and you know look this week on uh the three knockdown rule we had rudy hernandez you met him at trainees he hates mitt work he says it's the biggest fraud in boxing uh, you practice a bunch of things that you'll never do in a fight he only believes in shadow boxing hitting the heavy bag and a lot of good sparring that's it he doesn't even believe in strength and conditioning just jog in the morning that's it he's old school and i think it seems to work but if all you're going to do is hitting the pads like Floyd Mayweather for 50 minutes at a time and you think you're going to replicate that in a fight, you're not. You're going to do a lot of things that are going to look good for social media and they're not going to be really replicated in a fight. It's almost like the same concept. But when you take out hitting and pads in practice, you can no longer do the same two-a-days. You're not allowed to hit the way you once did 30, 40 years ago. That was collectively bargained for by the players, by the way. You have to find ways now to be creative, Coach. So maybe coaches are hemmed in. Maybe they have to do this type of stuff. Let, let me ask you, and I started the show by saying this has to be a complete – I'm not into conspiracies, but it sure sounds like we're, 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 we're creating a sport that is conducive for betting – odds and gamblers yeah. to succeed how are you not going to take derrick henry tomorrow tomorrow on your first fantasy pick as your fantasy draft player who's going to tackle them <laughs> well i mean 200 yards a game yeah but look a lot of those things relate to being out in space henry gets the ball he's running into like a wall of defenders it's a little bit like even like the uh horse collar you can horse collar in the box Certain parts of the game, horse collar is still legal. When you're in a pile, you're allowed, and the quarterback, I believe, is off limits. But in certain areas of the field, 
the horse collar is actually still not illegal. It's not illegal every single time. The well, horse collar, if you grab your fingers inside the collar, it's illegal everywhere. If you grab the back of the jersey in the box, it's legal. Right. So that so there's so adjustments to that rule. Good. but See, that, that's my point, Steve. We have too many rules for too many players. Like back in the day, Steve, when we came up, it was the same rules for everybody. I, I look, I'm with you. Look, you're not allowed to hit quarterbacks at the knees anymore. That's the Tom Brady Bernard Pollard rule. Well, you Steve, can't you, you, you can't hit low, you can't hit you can't high, hit and now you can't hit the hip. Right. So as a defender, where do I ta- where's my tackling box? There is none. <laughs> They're I, trying to take the contact or the vicious collisions out of the sport. And I don't know how much this has to relate to do with the CTE issue. Uh, with well, not making the game safer, the game will always be dangerous, regardless. I, I don't think that part will ever be completely expunged, but I think that the NFL in itself as a league does not want liability, or they want as little liability in terms of what is happening to these players uh, as possible. I think they were very scared off by the CTE issue, the movie that came out with Will Smith, you know, the class action lawsuits. But I think there's a realization from everyone that played on this level. Football is dangerous. It'll never be a completely safe game. It's just it's like boxing. You can put in a million rules. You're still going to have casualties, unfortunately. I got I got like, texts from a couple of buddies of mine, people you know too, some NFL players, ex NFL players. They were like, Ronnie Lott is literally saying, I never want to hear about another receiver in this generation saying he's the goat. And I right. don't want to hear about a corner or a safety or a nickel safety talking about he's the goat because you will never know how good these players really are in a flag football scenario when we're comparing no. goats, when we're comparing right. greats, legends. Like you can't hit the receivers, which is a great point. Can't really hit them. And the receivers don't really have to fear getting hit. And yet, last year was one of the worst offensive production outputs we've seen in 20 years in the NFL. And how is that possible? So now they're trying to, I call it, I say addition by subtraction all the time, Steve. I say subtraction by addition is also a real thing. We're, we keep taking away, taking away, taking away, and it's completely destroying the game. We're injury prone as, as much as we've ever been. More injuries last year than ever. Lack of playing time, more lack of playing time than ever before, and yet we're paying them more money, and we have more rules. How does that even make sense? It does. Yeah, I'm with you. Like when they talk about the great receivers of today, you know, that's Jamar Chase, uh, Jefferson, Jefferson Devontae Adams. I don't really look at them as guys like Michael Irvin, Jerry Rice, or even Randy Moss. They because those guys had to play through. None of them. They, those guys had to play through contact. Andre Johnson was underrated. Yeah, Andre Johnson in today's game would be unstoppable with his size. And it's like basketball. If you're getting no resistance at the rim or through the paint. I, I, I'm just telling you, guys like Kobe and Michael would literally score 45 points a game if they wanted. If they wanted. Um, so, like, when you run a bang eight, the bang eight that's run today is not the bang eight of Michael Irvin. Because there's not that guy at the top looking to ma- mash his head in. It's just not the same game. Um, so, and but you're right. And the ironic thing is, Coach, it's not like we're seeing higher scoring football games. A lot of games that's, are now that's 17, what I'm saying. 14, eight, eight minutes to go. I don't I don't understand. It just sucks though, I think too, because like t- to you guys' points, it's like these players will never get the respect that maybe they do deserve, but because of the rule changes, which is out of their hands, you guys like you know yourself, JB will never put them in the same category as the all-time great. Even if maybe they would be there, what we just won't know because you're saying the rules have changed. So it's not even just harming the actual experience experience from a fan standpoint and a fan perspective it to me is almost harming the legacies to an extent of the today's actual player because they don't get the full experience and you think they're trying to get a female player in the league soften the league to a point that they want to make this steve it comes back full circle i've been trying it's not possible it's not possible it's not possible but that's what they're leading towards it's literally Unless they, go to, unless they really go to flag, hard. unless they go to flag, it's literally impossible for women to play gonna, in the NFL. I'm gonna, I'm gonna unless break, they're going to kick a field goal, maybe. Kick is only position. I'm breaking news on this show right now. I'm going to tell you right now what's going to happen. I'm going to be the Nostradamus, JB Damas. This is what they're going to do, Steve. 
We got more and more female referees, which I think should not be in the NFL, number one. Number two, the female coach. I don't believe that should exist in professional football. Number three, this is how they're going to push it on us. Inch by inch, I've been telling Smitty. They're going to put a woman in the Pro Bowl because it's flag, and that's going to start the conversation. They'll put a female in a Pro Bowl game, and they're going to say, here we go. And then eventually it's going to become the first kicker walks out in the NFL game in pads. She'll be the first one to do it. And then there'll be some so – it'll be a – That's run. where it stops. That's where it stops because not, – not, not really. Not when the no, game – No, because at, 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 a certain, at a certain point, JB – Think about can, it. We can talk about all that shit all we want. Smitty, you're not hitting no more. You put a woman, you put a fucking woman left tackle out there against Micah Parsons, and we're gonna find out what what, what a man and a woman is. Seven three (laughs) fifty. Okay. (laughs) No, y'all, y'all tell me this: which outside of kicker, which position could a woman actually play? There's literally no position. You can't play corner. You can't play receiver. Not fast fast enough, tall enough. There's the there's no position. There's literally no position. There's no position. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Which position could a woman actually coach then, Smitty? <laughs> Coaching and playing. Not the Steve, don't do that, Steve. That wasn't good, Steve. That, that wasn't a strong take. That wasn't a strong take at all. I know I know a thousand coaches that can't play the game. <laughs> I know but they thousand. played the game, though. Steve right? Kim, Steve Kim didn't play, did Steve play Kim didn't play. play. Steve Kim didn't play the game, but can talk the game with the best of them. But I would never coach. I, 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 respect, I, respect, I respect the hell out of Steve Kim on this no, show because he because he has Darnell, the nice of game, Steve. No, no, I wouldn't coach. Don't belittle yourself, play, Steve. I, I, Don't do that to try to fit uh, JB's narrative. Ball, you want the smartest cats out I, I'm talking. Said- but Steve has been on record saying I couldn't coach football. I don't want to try to coach one, JB, is Steve one of the smartest cats you know? Yes or no? Yes, yes or no? We had He's one of the smartest cats I fucking know. He knows more about the game than a lot of other people. Why are you moving the post? Steve's yes. never tried to coach or said he would never try to coach football. Steve yes, has agreed and admitted to it. So the why is a woman coach. doing it? So Comparing well, coaching coach. to playing. Why are we back on this topic? We're playing the game and coaching game is two totally different yeah, things. Darnell, right? The only thing I would coach in football, and I remember like in, a, in living color skit, I would be like the celebration coordinator. I'd be like, okay, guys, this is what we're doing that, this week. That's we're gonna Steve. Do, and, and on our fourth touchdown, if we're up by two scores with five minutes, we're going to do a soul train line. I've cleared it with the coach. We are taking the penalty. We're going to do a soul train line. Or we'll do stuff like that. We'll do like a group bunny hop. Miami did that in 88. They picked up a ball in the end zone. Charles Farm. I'll never forget. We're at Death Valley. It was raining like crazy. Jimmy Johnson's hair actually got was out of place, one of them. So we're dominating. Tommy Hodson throws the ball into the end zone. Charles Farms picks it up. And all of a sudden, the Miami players gather in a circle. And I'm like, what are they doing? And they started doing the bunny hop. Oh, it was unbelievable. See, now that, as a dance coordinator, I'd be proud of that. I'd give myself a game ball. But that's the only thing I would coach. Hey, Steve, I want to read. <laughs> Steve, I want to read something to you from a college coach, okay? I got to be very careful how I read this. Yeah, don't reveal the Loved name. your take on the women in coaching situation. We experienced mm. something similar at the mm. University of blank, blank. where I coach. The, the assistant, the current assistant tight ends coach for the NFL team blank, her name blank, was on our staff at blank university last, last year. A year or so prior, she played in the women's league. Her one season with us at university of blank, she worked with the kickers because she really didn't know much ball and struggled doing other assigned duties. Our 2021 season Coffee, ends. Please. Our head coach gets a call from Coach Blank in the NFL trying to do a background check on her because she's getting ready to be hired for the NFL team Blank. Mm. Fast forward to now. The same lady that was coaching with us is now in the NFL, and our staff can't even get a return text message from her as she is too big for us at this level now. That is the point in the whole problem that I have with this whole inclusive situation because that doesn't happen, Smitty, with men. Men get a job and move up, and they're going to say, hey, Smitty, man, it's fucking unbelievable here, dog. And I, 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 Come on up here, man, and let's get you in here as an intern or let's get you in here as something. This lady now acts like if she belongs in the fucking NFL. 
Like, now listen, it's I, just I'm I'm in agreement with you on that. Like, it's unfair that a lot I don't of women. Snitch, Chris, I don't snitch on people that give me private primitive information. That's I don't know. That's not, I, I'm not from the valley. I yeah, you can't do that. But listen. I'm, I'm, hook, in, I'm in. I'm in agreement. Of, uh, any it's, culture, it's, women, a man shouldn't just get an opportunity just because of their skin tone, because of their their weight, gender. because of their gender, because of any of that shit. You shouldn't. You should get an opportunity because of how good you are at that role. So they, I, I disagree with the fact that a woman will just get a job because of that. My whole argument from the beginning was that if a woman does put in the work, if she does put in the work, who am I to say that this woman cannot? There's an absurd position. You're if, a man that played if football. She, if she puts in the same work. You're you, a man that played football. That's you, who you are. You said even if she did put in the uh, work. Darnell, I got a question. That was also all I was. Darnell, I got a question. When yes. you have your first child and she goes to driving school, if that driving instructor is Asian, tell me you're not going to be worried. Tell me you're not going to be like, oh, wait a minute. Hold up. Wait a minute. Really? Really? Steve, we all have we all have natural prejudices when we see any anybody or anything. Let's keep it real. Like if you pull up to a certain area, certain thing, you see you see a certain type of person, and you might have an initial thought. But how you respond to that thought is, is what is what matters. So yeah, in that situation, I might have an initial thought. Yeah, I want to get him to drive. And then it's like, you know what? Well, he is the coach, so or he's the driver, whatever teacher. Let him do his thing. Coach, you were get- right. When I was watching All American, the minute I should have turned off that show. Was when they introduced that female coach. Now, because I my last straw with that show was when the players went to go visit an HBCU in Atlanta, and they threw in this transgender character, and I'm like, oh, okay, it's out, out. But I really should have when that, that little Latina lady starts acting like she's Bear Bryant, and I'm like, oh god, that that was actually worse than the transgender. Now that I think about it, so I'm gonna say yeah. this then. We should never have any women come on here and talk football then. Please, JB. Like, but that's not forward. coaching. <laughs> no, that's nah, not coaching. But you keep comparing shit like that, dog. Please, let's, do it. let's do it 100% though. I don't, they shouldn't they don't talk. Because I really they don't, don't, don't get it. They can, so they can't coach it, but then they can talk about it. But then it's like, no, it, let's keep it all the way 100 then. If, if, they, if they shouldn't touch the sport, they shouldn't touch the sport. We shouldn't trust their word as a journalist. We shouldn't trust their word as anything about the sport because they didn't play it. So even the information that they give us, it can't be validated or correct because they didn't play it. Stand on that, y'all. Don't, don't, don't be on the fence. This say women shouldn't fucking touch football at all. Period. No, don't, don't be scared, Steve. Like, hey, and, not, and, and, and JB, stand on it. Don't be on the fence. Let's we keep are, it all the way 100. Look, we you are conflating what we said. I, all Coach said is he doesn't believe that women should be coaching football. He never said they shouldn't be partaking in watching football, commentating on football, writing about football. That's how can they talk, it, how how can they talk and write about it if they didn't play it, Steve? Because they don't know. Because, listen, the reason why y'all say he shouldn't coach is why. Because they didn't play, which which means that basically when you think when you think through what you guys are saying, you're saying you, if you don't play, there's certain shit you just don't understand. That is the you truth, though, right? Me. Okay, boom. Cool. That's that's true. So the, to the same token, taking that same thought process, why would I listen to a woman to uh, uh, on a commentating perspective talking about a game that she did not play, that she cannot explain and understand? It's the same – the, uh, to be consistent with what I'm saying. Like, I think be, you're the, taking that too far, though, Darnell. No one is saying you shouldn't have an opinion. Because think about it. A lot of people criticize whoever our president is, right, no matter who it is. But then you ask them, really, where have you served? Have you been a mayor? Have you been a councilman? Oh, uh, no. Well, well now wait. that doesn't mean they should not or are allowed to have an opinion of the leadership or the governance of our country. So it's, it's a little different. That, that's, that's all I'm saying. I hear you, man. I hear you. And I know you got to see Joy Taylor. I see. I know where this is going, Darnell. Just for clarity, <laughs> though, y'all, just, just, just for clarity on this, Steve. Just for clarity on this, I I told Jimmy from the from the jump. I I don't think a, a locker room is the most safe environment for a woman to be in because I played in it. So I again from the jump, I I still believe it's better to have it keep it all men. I believe it's better, but I, we cannot say in twenty twenty four that you are not allowed. To have a job, I'm with that's you. That's the part like, that sounds your crazy point, to me. Like when guys are ripping each other, and one guy's in a bad mood. Could you imagine if you had a female coach? You think you get along yeah. with her? Everyone's ripping on each other. It's locker room banter, and some guys, hey man, what are you on your period today? And the female coach is right there, be uh uh, but not you. Awkward. Right. I'm not. Right. Those are the 
thing that you'd be like, ah, oh, geez. You know, so that, that's the reality of it. But look, I don't mind female commentators. I really don't. At the play by, when they are on a show, a lot of the times these debate shows, you need a female. You need some eye candy. You need someone pleasant. You need someone that's neutral. You need someone that can be the point guard, right? But I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not a big fan of play by play being female. It just sounds different. I know I'm a terrible human being for saying it. It is what it is. I'm just being honest. Be honest. Like it's uh, just truthfully though. Like I'll be on. I'll be the guy that says it. Like I don't believe they should commentate football. <laughs> okay. <buddy. laughs> no. Nah, thank you. No. Nah, but you know what? You know what? I said it already on this show. What? I, I'll I, give him credit. He's honest about I it. I respect it though. I said it though. I said it. At least he said it. Stand on it. I've cool. said it before though. So. All right, right guys. Look. Stuff. Hey, guys, I got to get ready for my show, and I got to do my new workout, the Mike Tyson push-ups. It's life-changing. You got to try it, Smitty. Send me a link immediately. I'll I want to do it I'll send you a link. The Mike Tyson push-ups is a full-body work. You can do it every day, and I've seen results. I'm kind of trying different uh, things, but I never knew Mike Tyson had his own brand of push-ups. He's got his own brand of weed, his own tattoo. He's got his own like push-ups that people swear by. I'm going to send you a link on your DM today. Send me the link. Like, right, I'm doing it right when the show is. You don't even need a gym. All you need is a wall and your limbs. So as long awesome. as you have a wall and your limbs, you're good. You're Maybe good. you need to get on that too. I seen, your, I seen your, your chest. Hey, guys, I'm going to be in Arizona starting Thursday. So if you want to have me on tomorrow, why don't we make our second, My if, if, uh, if there's room, let me know. It's always room for Steve Tim. All right. So see you guys all tomorrow. All right, later. Peace. Steve Kim, clap it up. Um, the women are hot in here. Chris mad, everybody mad. I know at first you were saying all, all the women weren't mad at me. Nah, Chris, bro, what, hey, Chris you want to know what a female tendency is? What, what Gorion has in here? Female tendency, I'll educate you. Female tendencies, you're, you're a uh, feminine. You got feminine energy. Women should have feminine energy. So you guys have a feminine energy, emotional creatures, which you should be. And that is Gorion. He's an emotional creature with feminine energy that speaks with female tendencies. So there you're educated now. So now we can move on. Um, <laughs> let's dive into. We are no longer bringing that topic up on the show, y'all. Moving forward, that's our last time. That's our last official time ever bringing up ever again. Like, it's a real topic. I don't understand. Like, now nah, it's a joke because I remember earlier was it earlier this. Well, taste Tuesday last week. You was like, all right, y'all. This is my this is my last time. Last time bringing up women shouldn't coach, and we brought it up three more times. So that's why I don't mind. I'm saying it's funny though. It's a joke. Is what I'm saying. We're all yeah. emotional. I, I don't say men probably. I, I do agree. Men do get emotional. Um, I know what you mean. There's certain moments, though, like within the practice and stuff like that, where, like, you know, I, I, I could see a woman feeling like she should comfort a player in a certain situation, where in that same situation, that man is like, nah, fuck that. I'm going to make him sit sit on that pause because I, I know long term this is going to uh, make him tougher in this moment. So, like, again, like I said, y'all, I'm not stupid. I played football for a long ass time, man. I, I'm not, I, I think it's better to have men in that environment because I know what the environment is. But at the same side, I just can't tell a qualified, excuse me, a qualified woman or person, whoever. You know, you know what I do? They can have a job. I appreciate everybody that comes in here and all that. And, and we build relationships with certain people. But I don't understand, like, how people come in and then talk shit about the show that they're watching or expect to get me to answer a question, which I do, that the show they're in watching. Like, I don't understand mm. that part of it. Like, I'm trying to figure out. Gorian comes in here. And talk shit about the show that he's in watching. Like, I, I, is, is an oxymoron, right? Chris wants it me to answer her moron. questions on the show she's watching. Like, I, I'm trying to figure this out. Like, it's the show that we're all watching. You're watching the show with us. We're doing the show. I don't understand what the problem is. Like, you're in the show. I mean, it, it's not my fault that you get offended on my show. <laughs> I really don't get it. I don't go into a show if I'm offended and keep watching it. Like, I'm going to be real. Like, it's real topics. It's real shit. And guess what? You can fucking debate me or not. We keep it real with you. Like, we'll be respectful. But, like, come on, man. 
You're not responding, though, Chris. You're telling me certain things, a statement format. You're not asking me a question. You asked me one question, I asked her. What's female tendency? I answered you. <laughs> like, the other things you made were statements. I, I, I'm trying to figure it out. Like, I'm not mad, I'm just saying. Like, don't get offensive or butthurt if you don't like the answer I give you. On my show. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking crazy, homie. Like... We might have to go to. We might have to go to a pre-record format. You know, in studio. Oh, like, you might have to go. Catch, might, yeah, God damn, man. We might have to go pre-record. We, we might not be able to do live no more. So they taste the taste the interaction out, out, out of the show. JB, interaction is like, what makes the show real. What make what makes it real is the people like us on here who gonna give us a real yeah, taste. But the, I love Chris and I love the fat. I love the fans like interact because Chris gonna tell you or her opinion, which I love and respect. I think you should have your own fucking opinion in real life. I think you should have a real opinion and debate it and argue it as grown-ups. That's what I think. Pre-recorded gives you a fake, like a movie sense to me. I, I don't know. I don't want to go watch a movie after I know it's out, Smitty. That's kind of my thing. I know a lot of pre-recorded shows, though. That's, 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 uh, yeah, because... Show you how to show you how to go home. Be Let's be honest though, they're PC. <laughs> Willow, Willow's your PC. You go Willow's right now. It's your PC. You but it's still PC. Yeah. I can't cuss. You can't cuss. You can't cuss. What I know? You can't cuss. Really? Mm -mm. Ah, dang. Never, never mind. I didn't know that. He's on Blaze. He don't cuss. I thought you could cuss on Blaze. It's like Christian Network or something. I hear you. What we gonna do? We gonna do what we gotta do. Whatever's best for this show. Whatever's best for this show. I don't wanna get evicted. Whatever's best for this show, man. We gonna do what we gotta do. Me and Jay, we gonna be in a studio probably next. Uh, well, he gonna be in Arizona next week. Fuck, damn, I forgot about that. We gonna figure it out. We gonna figure it out, man. All right, I'm, I'm gonna probably be in the studio next week myself. Yeah, let's let's uh let me let me let me dive into some shit though, cause uh we got a lot of shit in here. Vince Young got knocked out last night. Sucker punched. Vince Young. Vince Young. Yeah, in a bar fight. Rose Bowl vision. Oh, he's in a no. black. He's in a black T-shirt. I don't even want to see it though. He's in a black T-shirt and basically gets sucker punched right here by this white, this cat in the gray right here, right here. Watch, he this little cat right here, this little cat to the left. Bam. Um. Yeah. I don't like that. That that kind of pissed me off. I mean, I don't know the. He's, uh, I believe he's an analyst at the University of Texas, by the yeah, way. Yeah, he is. He, uh, he, he shouldn't be over there and in that environment. Probably yeah, should have left him and arguing. Topic. That's going to be another next topic. Like, should now. So you see, this is the thing. We this is the thing, though. I've known tons of white boy coaches who have had DUIs and blah 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 and kept their motherfucking jobs. And I've seen others that lose their jobs. And then I've seen young brothers that I've had get DUIs or do shit like this in a bar fight, get fired. And I've also seen some keep their jobs. So I've seen both sides of it. So I know if he does get let go, remember, we can all say that, oh, we, Sark's got a sister as a wife. Um, Sark hired, Sark's from here, LA, Juco product. Uh, Sark understands what's happening. So I'm sure Sark will try to figure out how to keep him, but I promise you it's going to hit the news here shortly, and this is going to be big news. And Vince Young, a treasure there. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if he's either removed from the staff or you just don't hear about it, and they keep him on the in the in the in the, in the, in the office uh, for a while until he can, you know, rectify this whole thing. I, th I think they got to keep him because he didn't. At the end of the day, he didn't do nothing. I mean, he's arguing, obviously. It's but like he, Michael he Irvin hotel nobody. thing. Michael Irvin hotel thing. It's kind of like we always want to bring up shit like this. That's just a normal thing. So, like, my point is, my whole thing is to this is like, so, so celebrities and people just can't go out nowhere. Then is what you're saying. Like, I think it's bullshit. Like, no, you can go out. You just got to be smart though. And I don't know who he's with. Like, that shouldn't even. I don't know. When I go out with my people, like obviously Sheldon, we Sheldon's been on the show. It's like you know, it's like my brother. We in certain situations, especially in the past, even before I was like on TV and stuff like that, I would be in a more protective 
position if i can see if i can people certain environments or like that or even little stuff if we're about to take a picture and i know we drinking I'm, hey bro put that drink down you know like little stuff just because like i just know how when you in that position it's a true blessing to be in certain positions and you don't want anything that's going to be negative against you so i just think having the right people in your circle when you do go out and stuff is i, is, I, don't, is have, I don't know if i have any real homies that would allow me to be in that situation that's why I, same thing. I mean, I, 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 I wouldn't let you in a situation. I would grab you like, no, we out. Fuck. And I would get in between you and the person. Uh, I, I'm not sure, Chris, where it was. I don't know if it was here in L.A. Vince is in L.A. a lot. Uh, I don't know if it was here or if it was in Texas. But either way, it'll be covered up, I'm sure. But TMZ got a hold of it. So now that'll be huge news. It'll be blown up. Uh, I don't know if... Uh, I hate that he got knocked out though. That makes it about a little dude too. I know it was a I know it was a blind, like you know, he didn't know it was coming. So like the hit that you don't know coming, that's the one that hurts the worst. So I'm not like I'm not like joking that it just is a bad look, you know what I'm saying? To be Vince Young, Rose Bowl, fucking NFL had a decent career for a couple years. You know what I'm saying? Like you Vince Young, like him and Reggie Bush are the reason I started watching college football, you know what I'm saying? Like from my childhood. So like we look at Vince Young, it's, it's a different light in, in the football atmosphere. To see him getting knocked out in a bar, just just like ah, just, just, I, what's that called? What's that word you guys use? You kids use JB cringe. I, I feel it's like cringe worthy. I don't, I don't feel comfortable. Stomach hurt. I got a boo boo now. Hmm. Ah, that's it. Is, it's, it even the biggest cats get drugged through the mud. Um, uh, gonna be me. I mean, he's forty plus. Or how old is he? Got to be. He bought your way. Nah, he ain't my age. He's younger than me. What do you mean he was playing in 08? Nah, he's playing. We say it was 06 when I was in the road ball. So it was he was like two, he was 21 and 06. 06, yeah, 06 he's not I was like 12. No. I was like 12 on 10 carry to one. He 40. He's like 40 right now. Is he that old? Yeah, he has to be. Because 06 was that rose. 05 was that rose ball, I think. 05-06. Oh, They're saying he's 40. I oh. know. I just said that. Forget what they said. What your co-host say? <laughs> I know I do my math. <laughs> How, how do you know he wasn't older coming out That's of high school? Co-host. How do you know he wasn't older coming out of high school? Well, obviously, I knew it because I, I was right. I, I, was was I was a Juco. I was older. Me and Mo were older cats. Well, I know that. Scenario. Different scenario. Michael Penix is old as shit right now. What are you talking about? He ain't going to be 40. Uh, I, I know like, Vince didn't go to Juco. Yeah, I knew that. Be like Michael Penix is like 28. That motherfucker be a 42. I'm just saying. Uh, all right, let me dive into this betting shit real quick because I wanted to ask Steve about it, but we got carried away on a whole bunch yeah. of shit. Uh, and we never really talked about the DeJounte stuff all the way, too. So let's, 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 go, let's go ahead and go into it. Yeah, I want to get into this. So apparently he's out of the lineup, subject to NBA investigation, into irregularities on prop betting. All right, so we know that. Boom. I did a, did a video last night about it. So that happened, number one. Number two, though, this has come out. And he is charging people fifty dollars to see a premium room. I didn't see this, but in the main room, they are discussing things. The NBA and John Tay, and people are thanking John Tay for their winnings. This is wild, wild shit. So, deleted user, deleted user, deleted user. It, dog, this is crazy. This is a oh. Discord. This is a Discord, bro. I bet not. Hey, don't ever. Hey, see, I, yeah, I might. I'm, I'm done talking to Discord now. Y'all leaking Discord conversations now. That's yeah. cold blood. I thought the Discord was like Vegas. What, what happens in Discord stays in Discord. Y'all leaking Discord conversations now. That's cold blood. Hey, y'all, man, know now. You will not see Big Smitty in Discord, y'all, no more. JB, it be it in is. there. I'm not gonna be in there. It is. But as quickly as possible, so. A few times, I mean, once I turned 5K into 100K off our earnings play on Robinhood, I took out most of that and just traded with a little bit of count. Got that up to 50,000 recently and then uh, 50,000 and 200,000 in a few days. I forget what trade. I think that was on Tesla, Neo, and a few other trades that were just wild. But uh, yeah, man, I like, I, I think I go against a lot of the typical rules of like safe traders with that account because. I just try to grow it as quickly as possible. And obviously, I'm not doing this as my main source of income. It's more of a side gig uh, where I try to – it's like my fun money. If I if I do good, I withdraw it and 
put it either in savings or bless myself with something. But uh, yeah, man. If I, not, if not, you're depressed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that right there is not illegal. That's just that's just knowing the the the, the game and be able to you know do daily well, uh, if stock you made, trade. But if but you that shows it. that he has that mindset. He know he yeah, knows how to. But, but he's but the point is, I think he's making money on his betting and throwing it in on tra- stocks. So yeah, he's using that. Yeah, got you, got you, man. Yeah, he's called. Man, it, Smitty, listen. Smitty, Smitty over there worried about the Discord. Yeah, I just said some crazy stuff in Discord. I mean, I'm gonna go back and delete everything once we get off here. I can't, I can't afford y'all to be doing that, man. I'm gonna be pissed if somebody in the Discord leaks some stuff. That I, I'm gonna be pissed. Like, I, I'm, Chris, I'm gonna, Chris, screenshot everything right now. No, nah, I'm gonna call my cousin and then I'm gonna have him come fight y'all and everything. Like, it's gonna be a big thing. Like, go ahead and delete everything. I ain't talking Discord no more. I'm all professional. If y'all want to see me, you got to text me. If you ain't got my number, you can't talk to me then. That's crazy, bro. That. Shout out to him, man. Listen, he's a two way player, JB. You know, he ain't making, I mean, he's making 400000 right now, but he's not, he, he ain't got no guaranteed long term contract. You know, his brother, Michael Porter, is the star, not, you know, the bigger name. He's, he's safe. He's good. He, John says, trying to get out the mud. You know what I'm saying? Making good money, too. Good money. Good money on the prop. Everything going smooth, man. And they want to mess it up, man. It's, I don't get it. All right, Smitty, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Uh, oh, man. This, this is a stressful day for the brothers. <laughs> God damn, it's a racist show. Jimmy loves this shit. He's getting off to this shit, boss. Like so what? federal agents, y'all, have raided the homes. Plural. Can I give, okay, go ahead. Of American rapper and record producer Sean P. Diddy Cone. I think it happened in his Miami home, his L.A. home, and there's one more home as well. New York. New York home. All his homes got raided. You see his ki- two of his kids, I think, or three of them are actually on handcuffed right here in the L.A. home. Diddy wasn't there. It's been rumors that he's on the run. There's been a lot of false information as, as well. I saw an actual video come out of him just pacing back and forth at his private, um, you know, uh, airport or whatever for his jet, here, you know, here right here. So he wasn't really on the run. But it's a lot going on, man. A lot of information. You don't know what's true, what's false. But regardless, the raid is real. And they only raid you if they got some some type of information or something going on. So, JB, I, you jump in. You from the streets, man. You didn't been raided before. You didn't been in and out of all this. Shit. Like, educate me and the fan. What's what's really going on here? Let me give you a little insight. And again, I can't tell you who told me this, but it's coming from uh, somebody inside. But anyway. P. Diddy's not arrested. P. Diddy hasn't been arrested. He's not on the run. P. Diddy hasn't even left the States from what I've been told. Now, I don't know for sure. I've just been told this, that somebody who would know this has told me this is not even an attack on P. Diddy. It's an attack. (laughs) This is going to fuck everybody up. It is to get the big wigs information in their hands. So when shit goes down, there's nothing to get out of those houses. Because Homeland Security did it, Smitty, not the FBI. Let that sink in. Why didn't the FBI do it? It's Homeland Security who is involved. Not even the FBI. That tells me what my poor person told me is true. They went after the big people in this in this thing to get that documentation, those clips, those videos, those tapes, those paperwork, those documents, everything you see for the people that Stiddy is about to rat on when his ass go to jail. They got that shit first. That is what has to sink into you all, and that is what you will not hear on mainstream media today. Who's the bigwigs involved? Who is it? Who is Who are they protecting? Why did Homeland Security go in there and not even bother with P. Diddy? They didn't give a fuck about P. Diddy. P. Diddy's not nowhere. He didn't care. They didn't come after P. Diddy. They went after everyone involved that is a possibility of being exploited in this whole grand scheme of things. And that is what they wanted to get first. So when Diddy does get arrested and does start snitching, 
There ain't no paperwork. There ain't no videos. There ain't no documentation. This is Hollywood in its finest. This is government issues. We have a problem in this country, Smitty, and I'm going to be honest. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, just quick question from my own understanding. So when you say Homeland Security went in there to get all the, you know, the evidence, all the stuff from the big wigs, are you saying they're doing that to protect the big wigs? So when yes. Diddy, yes. when Diddy yes. snitches, they'll yes. say, well, where's the evidence? Yes. Got you. Wow. Wow. Keep going. That's crazy. Keep going. That's some different, like, my mind just. Yes. No one's even brought that up, huh? Clip that shit, Bailey. A mess. <laughs> it's about to, we about to blow. The show, the show, we just took off right now. That, that was the moment. There Homeland Security jumping the FBI is the issue that I have and what I saw initially. And I'm like, why is Homeland Security involved? Then I'm starting to think, then I get this message and I'm like, oh, shit. That makes sense. Homeland Security went in there and grabbed all the vital information so that Diddy can't snitch on them people because there's nothing to show. Homeland Security got it. So I'm trying to figure out why now now watch what happens the fbi now is gonna go do cleanup arrest diddy do all this crazy shit and then they're gonna act like nothing happened no well homeland security homeland security already cleaned it up they already got all the shit so i'm just telling you we're gonna see i love when matt hana says coach no that's not true that's all he has to say, though. He won't say anything else. He has no other backup. He has no other resources. He just says, no, that's not true. <laughs> Matt Hanna, do you want to call in? Well, you can't, like, actually video call with your face. You want to do I that? I just love when the motherfuckers don't give you any supporting evidence, don't talk about anything, especially when they talk football. They just say, no, you're wrong. <laughs> uh, all right, so look. Anyway, it's very, very intriguing to what I brought up. It's very, very, at least I brought up something that makes you think. Makes you think about it. So here's the thing. I have to, here's the thing, though. Like, that's the truth. Let's say they're covering it up for whatever the big wigs are. Um, Puffy, if you saw a video, there's a video out there of the night before. He was at a party at a club, and this motherfucker's looking around and shit. Looking around is, is the room and shit. They got him on video looking weird. Um, it's weird, man. I'm going to be honest. It's some weird shit going on. Have you seen this? My name's Ava. I'm a Scorpio. No, no, no. What's your last name? Oh, Ava Combs. What's your other oh. last name? Ava Baroni. Ava Baroni Combs? Yes, it's, it's breaking news. Diddy adopted a white child. <laughs> I, want you, I want you to. I can't. Yeah, I need some more context. I don't know. That's like a his son's right there behind us. Like, oh, Joe, I don't know what that is. I don't. Know I, what I don't is. know what it is either. I don't. But bottom line is, who's the white girl? Cute little girl. <laughs> Cute little girl. Hey, Jamie said, "Fuck it, who's the white girl?" He said, "I'm a white man." Here's Fuck here's, 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 a, here's one that I think is cap. What do y'all say, cap? Yeah. I think this is staged, and I want to dive into it without being super stereotypical. Laughing at Jay. Well, like I said, when the basketball go over there, I just let it be. I don't even want to knock on the door. <laughs> that's how black people be. Like, you know, we don't really like to get First involved all, in people's shit. Let's dive into it. Okay, so look, unless he listen, I'm not gonna be I don't want to be stereotypical because the young brother lives next to P. Diddy, but let's just be real. Where P. Diddy lives in LA, you gotta have I would say 20 mil at least if you want to live next to P. Diddy. So who is that kid? Is he a YouTuber? There might be some money out there. I don't know. Does anyone know who this kid is? Or is he the son of a very, very famous person? I'm trying to figure out who lives next to P. Diddy because not, just not no regular motherfucker lives next to P. Diddy, Smitty. Let's just right. keep it real. Let's right, keep it real. Right. He's so, somebody for sure because I saw there's a car behind him too. I was like, they, they, they some nice cars too. Like, that's somebody. I'm saying so. 
I think it's like a video. It's like a, what it, I think he's trying to be famous. I don't know if that kid is somebody. I have no idea. But whoever it is, uh, I think Ron, it's Ron, you so racist. That did not look nothing like some fucking Shador. I think all black people look at like motherfucker, a black dude, he got some fucking <laughs> twisties in his hair. He's Shador. Damn, Ron. <laughs> Golly. That's how I knew you had the sniper in the fucking oh. Ron got sniper on you right now. Man, do it, uh, Ron. Fuck it. Do it live. We'll blow up. Do it. Hey, hit me in the shoulder. Listen, I don't know what's going on. He's had his houses raided for whatever reason. <laughs> There's other shit going on. Listen, I don't know where you are, Smitty, with it. Uh, I, if it's true, it's a, it's really sad. It's unfortunate that Hollywood people, a, a guy like Sm- Diddy, who people call probably an icon, three-time what? Amy Award winner. Uh, uh, Grammy, like, I think. Yeah, I mean, you got to think about the careers he's been involved in. Obviously, from from Biggie to to Mace. To, I mean, the, the list goes on and on. And he, he's turned himself into a billionaire guy from the hood in in New I York. See tweets from people like Suge and other people saying like, "It's truth coming out." Uh, yeah. Cat Williams knew the truth. He told y'all. We've told y'all. Now, Keefe D and Puffy going down. Tupac, Biggie, both at the hands of Diddy. Like, people are coming out with all kinds of conspiracies or alleged. Yeah. And a lot of shit is fake on Twitter. Some shit's real. Yeah. You, 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 once more information come out, we'll know we'll know what's what. But I'll say this, man. For a long time, we've been hearing about Diddy parties, though. Let's keep it funky. But even before all this shit, like, yeah. But let's keep funky. You heard about the same shit with Michael Jackson. Mm-hmm. You was even too young, Big Smitty. Like, Michael Jackson shit was even worse than this, and it was no social media to even blow it up. Michael Jackson was even worse than this on a larger scale right here in California at the fucking at the carnival at his fucking uh La La Land or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And it, there wasn't even phones to share it. And then all of a sudden, bam, MJ dies or does he or whatever conspiracy theorists want to say. Bottom line is we didn't really know of Michael Jackson having any health issues, any concerns of him suddenly passing away. So like, well, then they said the, doc, the doctor why fucked something up. The doctor fucked something up. Was shit about to hit the fans, Smitty? Is shit about to hit the fan on in this scenario too? Is this why they're covering it up? Who knows, man? There's deep secret shit, deep deep state shit. I don't know, but I do know what I was gonna say um, when you asked that question. I, I, I'm glad I remember. We have a problem in America, in my opinion, and it's two things: it's politicians and it's pastors and priests. We have Far too many people that the people look up to that are crooked on the top. The people that on the bottom, like general populated people like us, that look up to pastors, priests, y'all go to church, y'all pay homage, y'all broke bread. You go to, you listen and vote for the right, the left, the blue, the red, whatever it may be that you vote for that you think your vote matters. We look up to the wrong folks, Smitty, and we and we we buy the wrong shit from the wrong people. And we all do these things. And pastors and priests have been known to be the most crooked motherfuckers on planet Earth. From pedos to uh, the R word to the money, all type, everything, yeah. the, the money they take. And and exactly, Chris. I don't. That's why I don't idolize folks, dog. Because you don't know them to idolize them. Like people so quick to jump on a fucking brand or a liquor because it's P Diddy's liquor or like dog. You don't know what you're drinking. I just, I just. That's why I've never. Tr- the most crooked motherfuckers on this planet Earth is priests and politicians. I've been saying that shit my whole life. I know that to be true. It is true. And we look up to them. And you wonder why, if you look up to that type of shit, and if you follow the shit birds at the stop sign and you all make a left with them instead of making a right, this is the same scenario. This is what we have. We're going to have a, 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 the rest of the country who's looking up to the wrong people. And now we're like, oh, shit, now you see what's happening. You see the fucking chaos. It's mass chaos, Smitty, out here right now. Like, we've never seen this country like this. Like, let's just be real. You can say the phones are are, 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 are are magnifying it. You can say social media is magnifying it. But you still never saw this 
to this extreme of shit that we have seen. Now there's a new conspiracy out here that, that all of a sudden this happens every time. If you really look into the conspiracy theories in this country, look into what happens and look how fast something new happens to get your brain off of what just happened. And my point is this. Take a look at this fucking Baltimore travesty that just occurred late last night, early this morning. Um, I don't know if you've seen it, but listen to this. This is a great video to explain it. This happened this late last night, early this morning, Smitty. This cargo ship just fucking crippled one of the most iconic historical bridges in Baltimore. Like, so look, the boat lights went out. Then the lights are going to come back on. Whoop. And then you see a big smoke, big thick smoke, meaning he started the engine back. Then the power goes out again. Bloop. And then it comes back on. Bloop. And it's too late. Bam. Hits a bridge in America, homie. In this country, he hit a bridge in Baltimore, Maryland, and we just lost an iconic Francis Scott Key Bridge. Cars were on it. Cars went into the ocean. And this happened on fucking American soil. Did people, did people die? I'm assuming yeah. they... The people in those cars are gone. Is it a cyber attack? Is it is it attack on America? Now that all the conspiracies are out there, because cyber attack shut down the fucking boat. The my boat girl was just my girl was just out there, like the DC Baltimore area, like Maryland. She was just in that area. That's, that's this scary. this year is gonna that's be crazy. Scary. Just telling y'all, this year is gonna be crazy. It's gonna be wild. We have shit on our soil that's happening that would happen in a third world country. And we're yet, and we're still denying the fact that shit is happening out here and people just want to act like it should go. It's going to go away. It's going to go away. I'm telling y'all, man, let's strap up. I'm telling you, something's happening. I don't know what. I'm not a conspiracy guy. I just see too much shit happening. And when shit stacks up, I tend to believe that it's stacking up for a reason. See, and we get it. focused on P. Diddy. We get focused on P. Diddy's house is being raided. And then guess what? Boom, they just took out a fucking bridge in our own center. By the way, Baltimore and Long Beach are the two largest ports in America, and then New Orleans. We have the largest ports. Uh, you know, we got the docks here in San Pedro, Long Beach, Baltimore. Baltimore brings all the goods in from the to the East Coast that comes out to half the country, and Long Beach brings all the West Coast. So we get Hawaii, Japan. We get everything from this side. They get everything from, from the, you know, Great Britain, London. All that shit comes there. And then we get it, they get it on the trucks, they get it on the trains, and we disperse it throughout the country, right? That's how it kind of works. We have a problem, dog, when this shit starts to, you start to see it hit our country as if we used to see it in other third world countries 15, 20, 30 years ago. We'd always see it on CNN. Oh, damn, bridge got bombed in London. You know what I mean? Br bridge got bombed in Afghanistan. We just keep doing our business. Never happened here. Never will happen here. That's all you used to hear. I, I used to hear it all the time. Then 9-11 happened, Smitty. Like, what? Now you have little shit like this happening every single other day. The, now, Boston, the Boston Marathon. Well, Sandy Hook before that, that people say it was fake. And I have inside information on that one, too. Anyway, I... There's a lot of shit, dog, going on that just people don't want to talk about. It shows that you can be, we can be touched. And for a long time, we didn't think we could be. And, and, um, and we don't know. The, the problem is, though, it's not about knowing we could get touched. The fact is, like, exactly, Chris. That's what it's symbolic in, in a lot of ways. And that's the part that I don't know if anyone outside the DMV, Baltimore, uh, D.C. areas understand what that bridge is. But yeah, because yeah. I because I I'm gonna be honest, I did I didn't like I didn't I really say over that, I didn't. drove over that bridge. Uh, I think I did last year. I'm pretty sure I did. I was in Baltimore last year for a wedding and stuff. I was all that's crazy. I listen, man. I just don't know like what's happening, but all I know is that we don't know if we can be touched or is it our own selves touching our own self. <laughs> Pause. Uh, 
Is it our mo- own people, Smitty? Is it our own government? You know what I'm saying? Masturbation. How do we it, know? It's moments like this where I don't like, I be like, not, not nervous, but like, damn, why am I in L.A.? Because, because, because LA's that type of city where some shit, if shit gonna go down. It's LA, it's New York, it's fucking. Here's the thing, my brother. I have, I have an Air Force fighter pilot brother that's been in Afghanistan, been in 9/11, been in Desert Storm. I have another brother who was in a Marine that was in Desert Storm. My dad was in the Army, tank operator. I've, I, I, from everything I know, and I know there's military people in the chat and in the room. Everything that I know. We basically really are untouchable when it comes to an outside country infiltrating our our country. Not only on foot, but by land and sea. We're the largest naval operative military force in the world. We have the best air uh, combat fighter pilots in the world. We have the the most technologically advanced uh, anti, you know, nuke. Star Wars, President Reagan put in the country uh, in, in the atmosphere years ago. One of the main reasons we're in debt to this country for that reason, which I wasn't mad about when I found out what it really was. It's almost an impossibility from any real military person that I know. That will get attacked like that and not know it or not be able to stop it or not be able to. You know, defend it. It has to be a within thing because there's no way we just allow a boat to get cyber attacked. And then, you know what I'm saying? Like, it just doesn't make sense to me. I, I, could it happen? Sure, I guess. I, I, you know, could the, tr- could the boat actually lose power and hit the thing? Sure, I guess. Yeah. But, like, why has that never happened ever before? Ever. I mean, that bridge been in for a long time. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I don't I just, know. It's quite, it's quite interesting to say the least. I what, just what, what can we do about it though, JB? I don't know. Live we're nobody. We're nobodies. Yeah, like we're we're, we're not even pawns. You know, you know, I say I'm a pawn. We're not even a pawn. We're like a fucking. We're nobody. We're, we're not we're even on the board. Absolutely nobody. Like a lot the of board. the cats that come in the show and talk shit. We're absolutely nobody. Like we're nobody in this thing. Like. <laughs> That's why I listen. I got my license. I'm just gonna get my hair cut. I'm gonna try to make the make this money, make five hundred thousand a year, and just lay low and chill and just relax. I saw a video, JB. We might need to move to move to Bali. I think that might be the move for us, bro. Uh, the dollar the dollar goes a long way in Bali. Uh, we can get a studio out there. It's, it's, it's chill. Ain't no ain't nothing going on. We might that might be the move, JB. In about five years, let's leave America. Let's go to Bali. Let's get a studio. You bring your AE, I bring my wife, and we just kind of just lay low and just chill, bro. That might be the move. Be real with you. Let me give you a little insight on who Francis Scott Key is. That's the name of that bridge that was just torn down in a travesty, okay? Mm -hmm. He was an American lawyer, an author, and an amateur poet from Frederick, Maryland, best known as the author of the text of the U.S. National Anthem Star Spangled Banner. Mm, the author of the text. She, she wrote it. Okay. Key observed the British bombardment of Fort McHenry in 1814 during the War of 1812. He was inspired upon Great. seeing the American flag still flying over the fort at dawn and wrote the poem Def- Defense of Fort McHenry. It was published within a week within the suggested tune of the popular song to Anacron in Heaven. The song with Key's lyrics became known as the Star Spangled Banner and slowly gained its popularity in the unofficial anthem. Finally, we know as the Star Spangled Banner here in America. Key was a lawyer in Maryland and Washington, D.C. for decades and worked in on important cases, including the Burr conspiracy trial. And he uh, argued numerous times before the Supreme Court. He was nominated for district attorney for the District of Columbia by President Andrew Jackson, where he served from 1833 to 1841. He also owned slaves. Oh, shit. I'm glad that. 1800. 
from 1800, during which time abolitionists re ridiculed his words, claiming that America was more like the land of the free and home of the oppressed. Yeah, so, uh, the original Star Spangled Banner it, it has some racist lines in there, so he was the one who wrote it, huh? Maybe, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, maybe you just you, you just said he wrote it. Well, yeah, he's, the, he's the author, yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah. So, well, I, I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't fuck with Buddy. I don't care how much of a legend he is. Personally, I don't fuck with him. He ain't, he ain't one of my people. <laughs> you have, uh, I'm not gonna say that. I, I, know, hey, I, I almost said what you just said, but then I thought about. I was like, well, I can't say it because of the situation. But yeah, we on the same page. <laughs> I don't want to put it in the chat. I don't want to put it in the chat. <laughs> but the bigger thing is, we had a boat hit a bridge in America right now. That's the bigger issue. We got a boat hit our bridge in America. So I'm trying to figure out how that was allowed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 200 years, 200 years later, Smitty. It's get back. Uh, I ain't buying that. I ain't buying that. Yeah, Craig conspiracy. Man. I don't know. Xavier side no. You know what what's funny? And it's been on my mind like last couple of hours. It's super random. I'm sorry for my mom be doing weird shit. You remember yesterday during the show, uh somebody in the comments was talking shit like early in the show, and I started going off on them. And I <laughs> and you was like, you was like, this motherfucker just got his license. <laughs> he, he already ready to use that motherfucker immediately. And me and you was cracking up laughing for like 10 minutes. I don't know why that came to my mind earlier today, but I was cracking up laughing like early this morning, thinking about like that's how black people, that's how motherfuckers be. Soon we get that damn license or whatever we get, and we already trying to like <laughs> like use it to threaten every single situation, man. I was cracking up. I know that's random. I'm sorry, but that's just it, it was on my hey, mind. Real quick, why don't the women in college March Madness and hoop? Why don't the women ha play on neutral courts? Why are they playing in the in the in the higher seated courts? I, to me, it's kind of crazy. Like I understand uh, why is it not the same as men? Like we're fighting for equality, we're fighting for equity. You want the women to be the same, but why don't you do that? Like so, that means you're you don't want to pay, you don't have the resources, and you don't you want to keep it cheap. You play at their home court. You don't go out and play in geographical situations. So I'm trying to figure out why that is. Coach Joe came on here or, or just posted that she's kind of like, this is a joke almost. We've been doing this for a long time. And it's like, why don't we have the geographical neutral sites that everyone talks about? It's not neutral when you're playing in South Bend, Indiana against Notre Dame. It's not right. neutral playing in Gonzaga. And then you're having to put your team like Utah in Coeur d'Alene. Now, Utah, for the most part, we can argue is a pretty damn racist state. I know you can argue is pretty. Uh, Coeur d'Alene is one of the most expensive, rich, nicest places in America. Mm -hmm. You ain't taking no brothers and sisters to Coeur d'Alene. <laughs> right, if you don't know about Coeur d'Alene, you better stay out of there. Utah's women's team had to move hotels because of some anti. They're saying that there's a lack of hotels, number one, in the Spokane area. They had to go to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho to get a hotel. It seems like my whole point of this, Mitty, is like the women are like old school with Barkley talking about chartered airplane, regular flights, uh, tight quarters, shitty hotels, shitty food. 2024, and we're still, the women are still having to deal with this, but y'all are okay with men playing them? Like, I don't understand, dog. Like, where are we at? Like, it doesn't make sense. It's hypocritical. Fucking give them the money, give them the resources, and women, start standing on your own business. Start fighting this shit and saying, I ain't okay with it. I ain't okay with it. Fuck it. Get people to stand with you and say, nah, I don't want men fight playing against me, and I don't want to stay in this shitty-ass Motel 8 and play at your home court. Get, make it neutral. Why aren't we the same as men in this March Madness basketball thing, Smitty? Why don't they get the same treatment? I, I, I'm trying to figure out why this is such a different situation. Because we st we still don't value women to the to the same level in this in America. And I'm just keeping it real. We don't. We just don't. Let's, let's be honest. It's not right. But I'm just that's what it is to this day. Have we came a long way from where it was before I was born? Of course. But it it still ain't still got a long ways to go. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't care. Like the fact, like you said, it's 2024. 
We got phones. We got proof. We got certain, like, we got evidence of certain, of stuff, like, now that we didn't have back in the days. The fact that these women who are actually bringing in tons of money, sold out crowds, and it's actually more popular right now than the men's are from a viewership standpoint, and they're, and they're getting treated less than, it's a, it's a damn shame. Um, you got too much money that's getting made by the NCAA to, to tell me that you can't tell me, oh, we ain't got the money or women ain't generating this. Rate. No, F all that. In the college spectrum, women are generating hella money, hella bread. There's no no reason why a woman, uh, in the, especially at the college level, should be treated less than th- than the men's. It makes no sense, man. Uh, but back to your original point about the, the home court advantage. I, I don't know. I kind of like it a little bit. You know, I, it's a little it's a little bit of a twist. It's different. But it's like if I'm a top seed, I earned that. I should be able to play at the I, not not I should, but I'm not mad that they get to play at home. They earned that by having a hell of a regular season, being, you know, conference champions, what have you. And on, on top of that as well, although that the women's sport has grown to a to a, a in a large way, I still question if they had these games at neutral locations, would would it be sold out crowds? Like SC at home in the tournament is gonna be sold out. You know, uh Iowa at home, they're gonna be sold out. But if Iowa, if the game was in, I don't know, just in, in Indiana, Indianapolis or something like that, just like a random neutral site, I don't know. They get the same sold out crowd. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, unfortunately, like it's grown a lot, but I still don't know if it's that big to where it don't matter the location. It's going to be a sold out crowd. I don't know if that's true. Um. Everybody's saying they, they want me to stay in the Discord. I'm like, are y'all going to John Tay Porter me, though? Like I stay in there, but y'all can't John, y'all can't John Tate me, man. Like I Nick, got too much to lose. Nick Lowe said, JB, what are you doing when I see you at the store next and I slap you? <laughs> I I'm waiting for you to do it. I beg you to do it. I will actually drop where I'm going today and then meet me there. I I would and film it, please. I I swear, Smitty, I'm at the point. I, I really, I want, I want to be tested at this point. I'm so over these pussies. I actually want to for you to do it. <laughs> I please beg you. I'm telling you, I'll tell you where I'm at. I promise to God, I'll tell you where I'm at today. Show up and come do it. But I would bet dollars to dimes you show up and you want to take a selfie because you're a bitch. Like that's where I. Th- that's what I honestly think. <laughs> I want to see it so bad. I get bored of Jesus that it happens. Um, all right. I was with JB the other day. We were shopping around. With, you know, JB, he's not good at shopping. So we had to go to like four different stores to get all his dinner. And every store he went to, it was like somebody, like a random person, like was looking at him and smiling. They were kind of scared to say something. But they'll finally, before we walk out, hey, JB, what you think about that quarterback you was coaching the last chance you were? Hey, JB, it just ain't the third. So like, a lot of y'all be seeing them in person, and y'all be y'all be whole different energy, whole different. Energy. I gotta ask two things real quick before we go to some white people shit, black people shit. I right, got two we minutes. Done in a while we haven't done hell yeah, hell no. Our shows have been so packed, we haven't done a lot of shit. Right, we got horrible, two production, horrible production by you and Bailey. So let, let me let me break down uh, black people shit. <laughs> Why white people shit? Blame black people shit. So let me ask you. Ron DeSantis in Florida banned social media accounts for children under 14. Good or bad? Good. Great. Really? You thought going to be on your side. But under 14, what are you doing? Only problem is, though, JB, this doesn't matter, though. You know why? Because all you got to do is log in and say I'm 18. That's all you got to do. I, I had a MySpace profile when I was, like, 13 years old. And you just when you log in, you just say you pick another birth date. You say I was born January 12th, 1985. So unless they have a way to filter that, I don't see how that how this this works. But I like the thought of it. The idea of it is good. I'm, I'm sure they have to have a plan, and t- uh, in a you have to be. Able you to would think so, but I, I you, you would you so you, like there's ways to prove on porn sites and other things. You can now finagle that, but back in the day, there you used to have to be like fuck. It. There are certain ways you can prove certain things. I, I don't know. I have you, to prove. You, you would think my folks would have some common sense, JB, but but they got squatters' rights, and my folks can take over your house too. And that shit sounds stupid. Florida. <laughs> Not in Florida. All right, Smitty, I gotta get your take on this because I got this is very interesting. Sean Strickland, who I think a lot of people like at AMAs, he's kind of boisterous, is has a lot of the same ideologies as I do. But he says that he can take 
I don't believe he said a Navy SEAL. He could beat a Navy SEAL's ass. I think people take certain things out of context. Listen to what he says. He says, I could, you couldn't train with me every day. He didn't say, I'm going to beat your ass. I think one fucking they, Navy SEAL who could survive a week training with me. The weakest SEAL that has ever been created would destroy you in a street fight, as I would. There are no rules. We are fighting for our life. Every single time you went for an armbar or a choke or something like that, I would chew your face off. Those ugly ears sitting on the side of your head, I would rip off. If I needed to, I would run my thumb up your butt, but it's okay because I'm a nice guy. I would lube it with tier three before I did it so it didn't hurt so bad. Yet you think you can break men like me? But come to the street where there's no rules, where we don't have to worry about hitting you in certain areas, where there's no bells, when it's all about survival instinct. It'll be a different story for you. Go ahead, Smitty. Agree or disagree? I, I got to agree with this with this man right here. I mean, it's, the shit he just said was fucking brutal. I mean, I just I, I, I had to clinch up when we said certain off. things. There's there's really, I don't think people realize the difference. Yeah, tier three. M MMA fighter and a navy seal or an army ranger there's two different night night and day two different ideologies two different worlds it's almost like a bar fighter versus a street fighter a street fighter wants no part of a real bar fighter just telling you right now and neither does a boxer you do not want to fight a bar fighter you don't want to fight a seal <laughs> you definitely don't want to fight a seal in a bar <laughs> uh but sean i like sean uh, and all that but He's out of his out of his lane on this one. Like this is what I they. I don't think you like Sean for real. You know, like Sean. Sean, cool. He hit or miss. He said some shit I agree with. It's cool. And then he said some fucking stupid, wild, crazy shit too. Yeah. Sean, Sean Strickland can fight dirty too, but he's not trained to fight dirty. He's trained to fight and be in a controlled space. He's going to be out in the middle of the ocean with this guy. And I'm be honest. There's not a lot of people in the world that would would fuck with those seals just telling you right now and there's a reason the seals even did what they did it's not like you just took uh no offense to smitty i'm not saying he's uh, like this but i'm saying like smitty just said hey navy seals came in grabbed smitty brought him in trained him he's un he's smitty don't want to do that shit smitty's being trained he's not that he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't go into with that mindset this guy already was fucked up in the mind and wanted to go do the Navy SEAL training. He's a Navy SEAL at heart to heart going into the thing. These other cats aren't, dog. And I trust me, I've been around some Navy SEALs and some Army Rangers. They're all wired different. They're all completely different. And that's why I have that mindset being around my dad and his homies that were Navy SEALs. Like, dog, like I used to tell you in football, grab motherfuckers nuts. Eyes, gouge them out. That's the mindset I had. I don't think people nowadays understand the mindset is completely different. That's why those kids couldn't get me in the lake. There's a different mindset. Y'all don't understand. No, 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 don't try to flip it and twist it. You're not a Navy SEAL, motherfucker. I get with no, you. No, 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 no. I'm just talking about mindset. There's a mindset difference. There's not a there's a there's a there's a SEAL difference. There's an MMA where there's I'm gonna arm bar you and I'm gonna tap out. Nah, there's no tapping out, bro. You're dying out there this guy would kill him like so, I, so he, all right to, by to, the way to, when he gets engaged there's no oh shit i gotta stop and there's a whistle like there's no stopping homie sean is fucked he's done but real quick though to sean strickland and all the mma fighters to their to their whatever to, to devil's advocate they have to stop because that's the rules you don't think some of them motherfuckers wouldn't continue to kill a motherfucker if they had to? Some of yeah, them are not all of them. Sure. sure. That's what I'm saying. Like, some so, of them motherfuckers. So you and I. Fucking so Nate, Nate Diaz, I think he would so, keep so beating somebody and, and would actually kill somebody and uh, would not stop. Please. It would no rules. So, so would you and I, but I please, can. please don't don't compare the same. No, 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 no. Don't compare the mindset, dog. It's not even close. I need to take you around some seals. And I'll take no, you around I, some, I believe take you around some MMAs. Uh, I, be I believe it's different. They're they're fighting for money and popularity and all that not, shit. Not even that. To your point, they, sure, they could probably kill somebody, no doubt. They don't want to. Right, right. The SEALs want to kill you, dog. Because they were tortured. A different mentality. They want to kill you. They want to seek you out and kill you. <laughs> I think like, me, it's a whole nother ballgame when it comes to that shit. I'm just telling you. If people do you, don't 
fathom it. Everyone thinks they're cool because of social media. I can say what I want because I'm not going to get touched. By the way, I would be fucking, it would be unbelievable if those seals just creeped up into Sean's house one day just to fuck with him and then he had no idea why he sleep. Because they'll do that too. <laughs> do you think you can make it through uh, Navy SEALs training? You think you, think you have the, the intestinal fortitude to just make it through the training? When I, when I was young, I, yes. Not yeah. now. Not starting at 48. Only reason I say not now because I just couldn't. I would fucking die. From you old as out fuck. Of shape. Yeah, cigars and shit like that. All right, I, can, I, I can make it through it for sure. Black people shit. Um, white people shit first. Hey, tell him to hang out real quick. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't even want to ask what that was. Some hillbilly shit. What's no. no fat motherfucker was really trying to get. They thought he was getting away. The truck took off. He just laid down. Yeah, he just leaned back. So he By the fall. way, isn't it like less than five percent of everyone that goes out for seal training? makes it i don't know you would know more than me i don't know i, don't know I, I, I want to say it's a crazy number of people that actually go only like five percent make it or some shit when you it's say a, make it you mean like survive and like don't die no like uh, get qualified and become a seal yeah that's just pretty tough i probably couldn't I, you know what my mindset today i would have to like go i my mom i'm so much softer now than i used to be i think i could have made it when i was like 23 24 though i ain't gonna lie um, i i would say it's it was you have a you have a better chance now than you did at twenty three. You think so? Yeah, because there's no way, no way. I only reason why I say that is JB. Like I, I, I'm not soft now. It's not about that, but like it, I'm not comparing football at all. It's a whole nother animal. Of course, I'm not. I will never disrespect and, that. And you, you like the water? You like swimming? But my they, point is, though, they, I was physically they, used they to going do, through a trauma. And shit. Underwater, they they swim. They'll carry you 14 miles in the ocean. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. Yeah, never mind. I couldn't do that shit. I, I, do you know what they do, homie? Like, I, I could probably do army training. And army don't do water shit, right? They still do a little bit, but who do mostly land? Whoever does mostly land, I can fight handle the water shit. Get right. into some water, dog. Marines, Navy, Air Force. They all gotta get a little water. Air yeah, Force I'm is a, probably the least. Yeah, I'm a, uh, I, will actually, I will actually panic in the middle. That's one of my biggest fears: dying that way. All right, let me show some Asian people shit. I got some Asian people shit for you guys. We ain't no logo for it. Oh. Oh. Man, what's gonna get It's like a game of chicken. What the hell is going on? That's you know, really we- in Southeast Asia. Uh, Pat was just there. Dog, he was talking about that shit. It's real shit. That shit is real shit. Like, they have no lanes. There's a constant movement. It's also like that, I think, in Iraq, Iran. It's fucking crazy. Talk about bad driving here. Go over there. You cannot you cannot text there, homie. Jamaica's kind of like, not to that extent, but Jamaica kind of like that, too. Like, all you hear is fucking honking horns. Yeah. There's no Go lanes. ahead and text there. Go ahead and text there. Our driver be like in the opposite lane going face to face to the last sec. Like Jamaica's a little bit of that. I was in the fucking in the little tour bus, like, whoa, what, what, what we doing? What we got going on? Yeah, dog. I fuck with that shit. Uh you don't really appreciate what you have here in America until you go to other places. And you like, damn, okay. Like you like, we fucked up, but they fucked up. You know, it was like levels to it. Smitty, hell yeah, hell no. Nah. Arizona will win the NCAA tournament. Hell no. Nah. 
That will be Purdue. The Boilermakers will win it all this year. I told you guys that from the jump. They no one can stop Zach Eady. He's seven foot three, bigger, stronger than everybody. No, Purdue will win it all. I think Arizona's gonna win it all, dog, for some reason. I got well, I won my bet yesterday. I was gut right. In, so weird gut instinct. I don't know why. I think Gonzaga's gonna give Purdue a lot of problems. Oh, they will, but they're gonna lose though. Um, yeah. Two hell yeah, hell no. Nah. Women should ref men's sports. Women, hell yeah. It's a referee, don't mean it's a referee. It has no impact in, in terms of like the, the, the players day to day. It's just refereeing the game. You go, you hey, got to your class in here. Chris will give me an honest opinion, and I, I respect Chris's opinion. Chris, you're a coach. Chris is a coach, by the way. Chris, do you do you really think women should referee NFL football games? Ooh, my back just did something. Do you really think women should actually coach NFL football games? Women, just I think they could coach basketball and shit, even though I don't agree, but I, they play the sport. They don't play football. There's a whole nother thing. There's, there's rules you never played in. There's conditions you never played in. I don't know why you would even put yourself in that scenario. I don't know why I would want my I wouldn't want my daughter coaching in the NFL, Smitty. Chris, Chris, said, no, Chris said no, I don't. I because Chris, I knew it was gonna give an honest opinion regarding but I think I think it's a different different question saying should and should and like can they like you know what I'm saying? Like again, should mean well, like what do I prefer? You shouldn't, then you can't. <laughs> nah, you're talking as if like it should be like a fucking rule where fucking women just shouldn't like you, I, you I just allow you know, you, like that, that that sounds nuts to me. That type of situation. I, I think it should be like we have seen men in this sport as a ref in the NFL back in the day, get absolutely trampled on and lose, never ref again because they had super bad, they broken legs, concussions, the ribs break. When the woman actually Rare. gets, when the woman happens, when it happens to the woman, I want to get your take and everyone's take. When the woman gets absolutely destroyed because she cannot move out of the way or she cannot avoid harm's way because of a, an experience based tactic, meaning I know where he's going because I played the game or I know just athletically, biologically can get out of the way. When this happens, it's going to be another discussion. And I just, I'm, I don't want to say I can't wait because I don't want to see a woman get hit. And that's the point, Smitty, I'm making. I don't want to see a woman get ran over by a man in a football game. Like, I don't understand. Damn, why you guys don't get it? JB, like, why are you why, why are you using why, that? Why, 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 why am I putting a woman in harm's way? Why, why are you using why? extreme circumstances to, to make your point? This this ain't no regular, every regular, regular shit that happens every single see. game. But why do you want to see it, Smith? That, that's that's like saying women should never drive the car because they might come get on, in an accident. Come on, man. Yes. Why they're protected, Smitty? Why do I want to see it? Why do nobody I want? To, I don't want to see a man get trampled, mother. I don't see nobody get trampled, JB. Like, why do I want to see a woman out there though? Like it's not sexist. It's not fucking. Uh, I'm an asshole. It's why do I want to put my daughter in a fucking man sport? No, why? the question is why does it bother you so much? Why do I want to see a man compete versus a woman? Why do you why? wake up? Why do you let, no? Don't put them in the same boat. I didn't say they should play. Stop it. I didn't, it. I didn't say they should play. I didn't say. I didn't say they should play. You said refereeing, and then you said coaching. Refereeing is a no-brainer. Yes, referee has nothing to do with nothing. That's not, that's not a conversation. Next, the coaching thing. I hear you. It's better. It's a masculine environment. It should be men. I understand it. It should be men. Not. It should be men. It should be men for multiple reasons. That I'm not even going to dive into everything on here. Just no understand this. A, a football locker room is very inappropriate. I'm gonna leave it at that. So because of that, yes, it should be to protect the women. But but there's always, there's always a but. In 2024, if a woman does puts the work in for any job, for any job, CEO, fucking social media manager, fucking doctor, nurse, firefighter, this woman firefighter, a police officer, I, I'm, I'm not going to tell this woman who put in the same work and effort that a man did that you just can't have a job just because you got breasts. I, I'm sorry. I just can't sit with that. It, it, it does. It doesn't mean that I I prefer a woman to coach me. It doesn't mean that I want a woman to coach me in, in that environment. I'm with you on all of that. But to to say that we think it should be an actual stipulation that that uh, renders and stops the woman from actually doing it, regardless of her experience, regardless of what she knows, regardless of what work she puts in, 
that just to me is asinine to say that. That's the only area we disagree, JB. So I'm yeah. gonna make this very clear and very, I very straightforward. You, I let me ask you this. I know everyone in the room is gonna disagree with me on this take, but I wouldn't let my daughter or my wife be a cop either. No way. No, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't want them to for sure. Okay, then. So if you don't want your wife or girl or daughter to be a cop, why not? Because I'm I am super overprotective of of, of no no of, no no, no. Yeah. Why would you not want your wife, daughter, or girl to be a cop? Because I'm super over, overprotective. I don't want them to get killed. So so what's the difference in coaching and playing in the NFL and re and refing in the NFL? What? Women don't have the biological gene or genetic makeup to be a hunter or an aggressor. You do realize that, right? The X chromosome and the Y chromosome are very different in testosterone laced, in biological DNA makeup, genetic makeup. A woman does not have the hunting mentality or the mentality to go by nature and break up a fight, shoot someone, attack someone, go in and break up a malice intent by anyone. Women don't have it in their DNA. But yet we want them to be put in to a man's environment, a hunter's mentality's environment to go protect and serve a coach grown men in a gladiator sport B and then referee a gladiator sport with all men playing C. Now, please tell me why you're forcing that upon me. JB, it's a difference, it's a difference between wanting something. It's a difference between wanting something and having a preference for something and saying something shouldn't be allowed. That's what it is. I've been asking a question. We I agree. We why. agree. We say, agree on the preference. What was? I didn't say what was. I just want to be clear. I'm just asking you why we do this. Why we're pushing this, America, America in general. Well, it, it, in the broader scope, we're trying to push this equality thing where everyone can do anything. In some ways, inclusive, I hear it. all inclusive. In some ways, it it makes sense and I understand it. But in this, in other areas, it's like, well, there's no, you know, there's no standards, there's no restrictions to certain things. But when it comes to like jobs, though, but that's how I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it as, as a job. And maybe I'm looking at it a little differently because, and I listen, I'm not making this a race conversation at all. But I, but just the, the quick example is that as a black man, I understand that black people were literally restricted to do a lot of shit in this country not that long ago. You can't. I know, man, they, I know. I know. I know. But I know the exact saying. I'm not but saying a black that. JB and a woman are completely different. I'm. I'm just saying. I'm just uh, listen. Just stay with me for a minute. I know it's not the exact saying. I'm not saying that. Only reason I'm bringing it up is that. Maybe subconsciously, that's in the back of my mind. And having restrictions on a put restrictions on somebody good from point. a career right. or a job is is just it's hard for me to fast hard for me to, to connect that, to that. That's a great point. By All you. I'm saying it could be subconsciously. That's a great point. But it could be a subconscious thing. But when you put it out on the table and you put it out and you take the grease out and you put it on the napkin and you start to dry it out. You see that it's not. And I get your point, And it's a tough one to fathom. But at the same time, it's just not. Chris said, I don't agree with our genetics that makes us weak physically. I'm, I'm curious to get your take on that, Chris, why you say that. Um, see, like per capita women, they're strong women. Per capita. Like that means like within the woman's like, sex. Like, like they're strong for women. Yeah, there's no yeah. woman out there that's going to go out here and physically move me and dominate me i'm sorry i don't even care if it's a bodybuilder you could be strong as you want i'm i'm going to fuck you up i've seen a few shot putters though that might I don't I, so have i but i'm going to fuck them up smitty in a fight stop stop that's what we gotta stop with like what about what about the marines train women we just got done talking about yeah that's fine it's still not like i'm what it's like, still what it's not the same it's still but, not the same like, well, that's what I'm saying. I want to, I want to get your take, Chris, on that because Chris said because I said that our genetics keep us from being able to break up fights, etc. So you don't think you think you can go break up a fight between men? Then I'm just trying to see what Chris is saying. 
I agree. There's women that are strong and there's women that are within the women are strong. I'm talking men versus women, Chris, not, I think Chris got it wrong. Say took what I said wrong. It's women hard to communicate. People my, my point is women going, being police, right? Police women are in the street. Yeah. It's not, you're not just only policing women. <laughs> like you don't know if there's only women in a fight. There's going to be men involved in doing bad, harmful things, and you have to go break it up. It doesn't see Chris. It doesn't depend on the size of a man. That's where I think you're wrong. It does not depend on the size of a man because a hundred and ten pound man would still crush a five ten Layla Lee. Mm. I'm just telling you. Uh, it's just biologically different. It's not a, I'm not knocking women, Smitty. I actually don't want a woman to knock me out. <laughs> like, like I'm trying to figure out what we're doing here. Like, it's not a dick measuring contest between men and women either. Pause. It's not. I'm not saying that. It's a, it's a fact of there's a masculinity part. There's a femininity part. There's a real part of a soft legged woman. You shave your hair for a reason. Like there's a re there's a thing to this, Smitty. Like we want our women soft, beautiful, elegant. We don't want women dog fucking fighting. We don't want them policing. I don't want to worry about my woman coming home at night because she got fucking killed in a bar fight. I don't want to see her get trampled in a football game. I just don't get it, dog. I, I really don't. I don't want to see it either. But those women don't want to see their men doing any of those things as well either, though. No. Like, no. It's a manly thing. And she, the woman understands that men, the woman understands that men, that is their job. Because without that, we would have no protection. Like my, my, my mama told me after I was done playing, she never told me why I was playing. She told me every time I had a game, she was scared out of her mind. My mom used to tell me the same thing. Because, because, so I'm saying like, I. And then what does our dad say, Smitty? Ah, calm down. It's fucking fine. You know what I mean? Right, Just right. They do. Let that boy be a man. You know what I mean? Like, that's what we do. We never say, right. ah, let, let Susan be a man. Uh, the fuck? No. Go play Barbies. Go do your makeup. Go fucking do these things. This is what we knew. That's what they supposed to do. And there was no beef. There was no issue. There's a woman and there's a man for a reason. God made it that way. Y'all believe you so, much, so many Christians in here, so much Christianity, but then you misinterpret everything the Bible says and you go in the other direction. Now they're equal? What? Fuck me, man. Anyway. I mean, I tell my about? wife, my wife don't take the trash out. I, I say, don't don't touch the trash. Even like the littlest stuff. Yeah. You don't touch so again, I'm not like saying the, reason, I, the, the way the reason that I have to. But that don't mean she can't fucking do it, though. That's the difference, JB. The, 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 I gotta like defend it is what really boggles my brain. That's what the real thing that boggles me. Only like, way you gotta defend it, JB. I gotta be real with it. JB, I be with you though. I be with you with the theory and the like. I'm with you. Like, like I don't know if you listen, are. You, the, you, you're with me because you know, in theory, that you're like, all right. Listen, the the man opens the door for the woman. There's certain things like I'm with I hear you, but the old listen, the only area where I'm like, all right, JB, I'm walking with you. We're walking down the alley. I gotta stop right here and you keep going. It's when you go you as far as to say they shouldn't be allowed. That's the fuck that like, Mate, you you and you and your wife's walking down the street in LA in the hood. There's a bunch of hood cats walking. I'm stepping in front, I'm to put my life on the line. No, 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 A bunch of females walking up. Females look you up and down, looking at your ass, your ass, like, oh boy, that fella, you find a motherfucker. What's happening? My wife going to say something. No, she's not. You're going to stop your wife from fighting five girls. I'm going to stop her, but she's going to say something, though. Okay, yeah. she might say something. Now, let's flip the coin. Six motherfuckers walk up, look at your girl up and down. Damn, she got ass. You hear it. You see it. What's cracking? We fight. My wife ain't gonna want me to though. All right. Oh, thank you. But the same concept. Thank my wife, you. my wife, my wife's gonna try to hold me back in that situation too because she don't want me getting you. hurt. But, but she, she just, can't. Right. And she that's can't. the thing. It's a hunter's mentality. Those six fuck ups and shit birds are hunters as well. They are looking at your girl. You're in defense of your girl as a man should be, and you 
as a man stood on business. I it's hear a you. difference, homie. That's, That's what I don't understand. But why JB. we can't fathom the fact that why are we forcing this on women? Why is that the same as it is the, the same? They're it refereeing is, a game. It is the same. Why can't you see it? Is my question. Referee? Like, why can't you see it? Is my question, homie. I can't see. Like, I'm looking for they can't referee a game because I mean, no matter what I tell you, all the facts that I'm fucking sitting here dropping about the thing, and you still don't see it. They're not like, connected what? though. Like the example you used then got shit to do with the refereeing a game. It actually does. It's the you know? same thing. Your girl ain't gonna get out the way of the six dudes coming to rush you. They're not going to get out the way of the NFL players running 20 miles an hour and 10 pounds of gear. Exact correlation. Fucking no difference. Coaching in the NFL, I have to get physical with my tackle to show them how to defeat Miles fucking Garrett. I got to get in there as a woman. Fucking step right here. Put your fucking foot in his asshole. And then I want you to grab it by the fucking eyelids and peel him off. That's not happening by the woman either. God damn it, homie. You got a better point with the coaching side. I'll give you that. But the referee inside, you can miss me with that. You ain't got no argument on the referee inside. There's zero I, argument. You mean it's the same argument. It, no, it's, it's not. not no, you're it's defending not. It. I don't understand how you're defending it. Ugh. Refereeing, JB. Just know the rules and call the game. Flag. <laughs> False start. 15 yard penalty. Why can a woman do that? So, hey, hey, Chris, and I, I know we're already 30 minutes past our show. That's crazy. Yeah. Tomorrow's going to be 30 minutes shorter. Chris, talk about how men have changed, and that's why women are more equal. That's a point I'm making. You're making the point for me, and I know Chris agrees, actually, with some of this shit. That's why she's saying that. Men have become. That's why the fucking. Why do more young males have low T than ever before? That's a fact, by the way. It's a fact. Why are low more men low testosterone now? Why they're not playing, they're not playing outside made, no more? Why have we made women more inclusive to everything? Because we have more beta males than ever. We have more alpha females than ever, and that is why hierarchy lacks in this country when it comes to pecking order, and why kids tell grown adults what to do and what not to do. Why grown folks are allowing it and not coaching it, and that is why we have a problem in society. Not only sports. Mic drop. Let's end the show. Uh, and that's why JB thinks women shouldn't coach. Hey, I got to go, y'all. It's 10 o'clock. So tomorrow's show going to be two and a half hours. You're going to make up for this time I overdid because I ain't getting paid for extra, extra hours. Uh, yeah, we appreciate y'all, man. I, I might be in Discord. I might not. I don't know. Y'all going to try to Jante Porter me. Um, hopefully, I don't get evicted for going 30 minutes later. I think and, I broke uh, my head. Yeah, you probably did. You, you ain't like that no more. You saw me. I'm going to be in a cast tomorrow. If I was in a cast tomorrow, I'm going to be real. You should straight up call me a bitch. All right. I will. I hope See, you real, If I was in a cast tomorrow because I hit my hand on this thing, you should come in here and say, you're a bitch. You went and got a cast? I would never. I hit a hand. Who's in this chat? My players. I hit a. There's a chalkboard on the wall. At halftime, I fucking hit that bitch and cracked it. But behind it was a brick wall. I remember that story. I broke, I broke every fucking finger in my hand. I broke the top part all the way down to the wrist. Then the whole game, I was fucking throbbing in the game. We came back and won. It was worth breaking my wrist and hand over coming back and winning. That's my mentality. That was how I was built. We don't get that no more. We don't see that no more. We want women to coach and ref. <laughs> anyway, love you, Big Smitty. Love the show. Love everything. Hope you're not evicted. I love your landlord, but I had to pull up. I might have to pull up on your uh, your neighbors. Nobody will know. And then we'll get this know. going. Try to get a studio. I'm gonna do some things today. We got other things in the works. We got some other things playing out. Keep following us on our betting because I'm nine and three in the last two days. God damn. I'm three and zero. Oh. You're a connoisseur. Shit. I'm three and zero. Oh. You only bet once though, huh? Big um, money. Big money. I'm bet. Smitty and I are gonna compete too. By the way. So, pound the like, subscribe, become a member if you're not one. We'll see you tomorrow. It's Work Boot Wednesday. Keenan Middleton, uh, as Major League Baseball opening day is about to get cracking. Big Smitty's in the Discord right now, deleting everything. And then all you guys, pound that like, and we'll see you tomorrow.
Peace. Issues get pressed so fast, it don't get sacked like bags and baggage. Smitty and Jason Brown killed the ass a rap. We were